ready to tweet. Look at me go. Got these Twitter fingers going. Is there already pre-typed tweets that I get to go, hey, look, who tweeted? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see the tweet. There it is. That's that. that's what I that's the sound I make every Wait. time I post a tweet. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> there it goes. Oh, I'm like, right. oh, this is a banger. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you don't let you go, little feller. Go make the people yeah. laugh. That's me patting every little pun on the head <laughs> on the way out. I am starting this podcast with my head tilted to the side because I put in eardrops. Oh, I went swimming. wow. I'm going to be doing that hopefully here in a week. God, I have to wait a week. Oh, like I so know long. that there's stuff the in there. Ear infection. It's a thing. I don't think it's an infection at this point, thankfully. Okay, oh, but thank it God. is impacted, so it is like affecting mm. my ability to hear, and I kind of have to like pull away for some from some projects right now because I can't trust my hearing 100. Um, percent Like I've got this constant ringing in my ears that I know is from. Mm being impacted so like anytime mm -hmm. i hear a voice it sounds like you've got a radio turned all the way up and it's bleeding weird oh, geez. yeah that's what happens when my ears ring when it's too impacted and then when it comes out like a day later it's fine mm, gotcha type that type that type <laughs> all right look at beepner look at that guy i know beepner I'm gonna be doing a collaboration stream with Beepner this week. Nice. Mm -hmm. That'd be. I just good. had the moment of like, we're only on episode 151. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because before it was like, oh my god, I can't believe we've done almost 150 of these, and now it's, oh, we only did one last month. We only did one last month. Well, no, we did two last month, didn't we? We did. Come we on. did 149 Dude. and 150. Last month. Oh, why am I forgetting 150? I'm just, so, I'm stupid. I'm yeah, stupid. like 150 was literally no. the last episode. I guess I'm not realizing how far into February we already are. I'm We're still, halfway. I'm still at, I'm still at end of January, guys. It's fine. Oh, man. Look, man, again, like I know this comes up every time we do a show, but time is just. I'm seeing, like, what are you guys talking about Valentine's Day? That's like a month away. Mm hmm. I got two great new follow names on my uh, dashboard here. I'd like to read them. Excellent. One of them, okay. one of that, one of them sounds funnily Symphogear gear related. This is uh, unstoically des. D e s s, just unstoically yes, yes. des. Which one's des? That's Kirika. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, she says des after every sentence because she's an idiot. <laughs> um, and then, we and then have, she tries to still murder her best friend. Yes. And then we have a Lance <laughs> to the Bean. I appreciate that. As a Contra fan, I really appreciate that. That sounds like, oh. that sounds like a sex thing. It could be. It could be. They, they, kids are all saying that these days. Yeah, I yeah, took her home, gave her the old Lance to the Bean. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn, I'm having to Google Contra main character so I, I can love, find. I'm pretty sure his I name is just Lance Bean. Bean. Yeah. The oh, thing, okay. The thing that I love. No, I was trying to think of. I was trying to think of the name Riser, so I could be like Riser to the, and then Bill, the, <laughs> and something else. Damn yeah. it. Fuck. I love that when anything sexual comes up on the show and I say something that could be a little gross, Rhett's like, oh my god. And then there I was look, something and, about... And then I yeah. look at the DMs that this boy sends me sometimes. <laughs> look, Rhett's st he's still pure boy. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I could explain the train of thought there. Okay, okay, let's if you it. want. I would, okay. I would like that. Okay, so Lance is obviously a dick. Yes, yeah, it is a dick. Bean... Beans make you fart. They do. So farts come out of your ass. So it's an impl implication of anal sex. No, 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 no. See, I was bean, saying bean, bean's the clit. Bean is the clitoris. You're oh, shoving your, it, which well, is. I'm, just, I'm explaining my train of okay, thought. Okay, I got you. I got you. Lands so, to the bean. <laughs> right, right. So to Rhett, the clitoris is in the butthole. Is that <laughs> no. what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, that's what my train of thought was when you were saying that. Yeah, okay. I mean, pro prostate could I mean, be the bean, prostate like. could count as like. A large inner clitoris, and also and also bean like. It's maybe very even -like, arguably, yeah. yeah, arguably more bean like yeah. than the clit. And aren't you excited? So, like you're getting older, and you're getting to that point to where you do have to go probably get a prostate uh, exam at oh, some no. point. 
And it's like, <laughs> hey, guess what? There'd be a chance to get some dude's finger up your butthole and you might ejaculate. <laughs> Sorry, taking the turn turn away from the sex stuff into haha, you're old, and then immediately back into the sex stuff is very good. <laughs> That's what they know like... us for here at the Socks Cast, baby. It is episode 151. Yep. We're back. Happy Valentine's Day. Speaking of the clitoris. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, the prostate, we don't discriminate. We're your Valentine. That's us. We're all three of us. We're coming over. We're bringing some fancy chocolates. We're bringing wine. I mean, the fancy chocolates are moon pies, by the way. Um, uh, yeah. Now, what are you bringing, Rhett? The Lance. The Lance. Of, I mean, somebody's <laughs> got to. He's bringing the oh, Lance. You should remember this for later in the cha- later in the cha- thing, but you should close out with, we're your only Valentine for okay. the, at the end of the episode. I will you remember absolutely. That for I will absolutely remember. remember that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, hey, guess what? Exciting news right up front. The, and the Yay. only people that know about this are the people that are involved, but I'm going to let everybody know now so they can huh. all not care together. Huh. We have a new music-related podcast on the way. Oh, oh shit. Oh, my God. Hey. Like I said, like the, watch the viewers and interest just, like this is the part of the line <laughs> graph where it just, boom. <laughs> crashes through the bottom of the (laughs) x-axis um yeah uh it was actually just one of those spur of the moment things where um myself taylor and psychic heist were having 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 a dm conversation and and, and our our pal psychic heist was like man i sure would like to talk about music with you guys more it was like well i know what i'll do i'll brainstorm a podcast idea in 10 seconds and we'll just do it um our new podcast is going to be called we like bad music only and oh my god are yeah, you we're going I'm really with it, running baby. that one we are running it we're sticking to it it's called we like bad music only and it's going to be a monthly wrap-up of uh of sort of talking about albums that came out in the previous month that we enjoyed and then talking in depth about an album that each of us enjoyed and then playing a track from each one um, nice we are going to be recording January's uh, edition. We're going to be recording that next weekend, hopefully. So if you enter the music podcast, and I know you're not, uh, you can catch you can you can catch. <laughs> we like bad music only going up on the Monday after we record it. So yeah, hey, check that out. Hot new content that nobody gives a fuck about. <laughs> <laughs> setting setting the expectations. For, for yeah, the I got things real high, so real fast. Surprised. <laughs> I got like th- I got like thirteen words into hyping that up, and it was like, oh, this is just gonna bomb so bad. <laughs> Aww, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> this is gonna be the worst. And then you know, you just kind of have to go with it after that. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So that's what that that's gonna be happening. That's gonna be a good cool. time. For, that's fucking awesome, Polly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like I didn't want to do the album listening club in the way that it was because I feel that like that format is kind of tied to just a specific mm. group of people for me anyway. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. And and I kind of like the dynamic we had there. So I wanted to do something different and new musically that we haven't done yet in a way that's just like oh well like. Now, when you go into like album of the year, like there'll be some like context for the things that we've talked about over the course of the year that I think will make things really fun. And there's this nice through yeah. line you'll have, um, and, and and it won't just be like, oh hey, here we are a year later talking about stuff that you probably never heard us talk about. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. PH was kind of like the inspiration for that and wanting to talk about. Oh, music I think that's and, awesome. And it was just like, you know what? You damn right. We need to do something. Let's do it. Let's do it. So yeah, that's well, the thing that. is, music is better than video games, so that'll be good to have that outlet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who cares about video games, really? I mean, we all care about video games desperately. It's our curse. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but music is a better outlet, so that's it good. Is. It is. I think. <laughs> I mean, for I mean, it's you know, some would say it's kind of like my life's work in a way. So mm-hmm. I guess I could believe that. There you go. There you go. Yeah, we like bad music only. Coming up in a week or so. Keep your eyes out for that, and your ears, because you listen to yeah. ear, you listen to podcasts and music with your ears specifically. But some people with synesthesia can see music; it's fine. I wish I was mm-hmm. one of those people that could see music, because I think the, some of the music that I listen to would look pretty cool. <laughs> I want to get a look at that New Zealand Ardor album, see what that looks like. <laughs> yeah, that that's that looks like it'll be a lot of fun. 
Um, but yeah, how's everybody doing? Welcome to a podcast to my immediate virtual right. He's sending subsonic signals through the snot in the middle of an elephant's long, wet, cold gray nose. It's Rhett. Hi. Hey. <laughs> I am a little stuffed up right now. You are. That's yeah, man. That sucks. Every time, anytime you get a little bit sick, you get that. Or maybe it's not sick. Maybe it's just crying. Oh, you were. Oh, you were okay. Um, all me that's my podcast all media makes me cry all media makes you cry <laughs> <laughs> get that on a shirt get that get a, i want a drawing of Rhett with that on the shirt all media makes me cry <laughs> so you ready to cry this episode Rhett? a bit all right good good that's what that's what you're here for i feel like you're like the designated crier so it, i think john gets there sometimes too <laughs> And his, I, I, his name I, I, rhymes with crier, so it'd be it would be true. way cooler if John's name if John was the one that cried all the time. It also rhymes with liar. It does. It does. It might be there are a lot of kind of gnarly names like ire and ire. fire well, and we did dire a, we did and a mire. Whole, we did a whole Twitter thing on that once about taking your last name. Oh and, wow! Yeah, yeah, like that was that lasted for like a, a whole day. Of people just I literally don't remember that. Yeah, That's we were funny. all making tire jokes. Like if you, you know, if you know, like like if all the music or, or like if all of the movies made him sad, would that be John Th- John Cryer? And like we just did a whole fucking day of jokes like that. If he was a hand tool, would he be John, John Cryer? Yeah, see, <laughs> like we did a whole fucking God damn it. like a whole afternoon of Twitter jokes like that. I do. I actually remember that. It was probably like 2015 or something. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Oh boy! Or it was like literally 2020, but it still feels like it was you know 27 years ago. That's how that goes. To my immediate yep. virtual left, his pain is constant and sharp, and he does not hope for a better world for anyone. John Fire. Hi. Hey. <laughs> what a mood. What a mood, right? <laughs> Eternal mood. <laughs> That was one of those like, oh, I know how I'm introducing John this week. <laughs> Like, I know. I don't even have to think about that one. Usually, I have to sit here like while we're while we're getting set up and let them pop into my head. But I knew what one of like the, one of the few times I've planned them out. Uh, how you doing, John? Doing pretty well. I'm excited to talk about um, some stuff that's not video games, and then I'm also oh. going to talk about some video games. <laughs> hey, John. Games. Are you excited? Yep. About, are you excited about math? About math? Math. Yeah, I love math. Do you want to do some math on the podcast right now? Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, I've got a math problem for you. All right. Okay. Answer it as quickly as you can. What is 25 plus 25? 50. 50's nuts! (laughs) That's how you host a podcast, ladies and gentlemen. What? Hey, I've got a math problem for you, Polly. Oh, okay, okay. Let's go. Let's go. I'll post it in the Discord chat, oh, too. Geez. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, jeez. What do we got here? Oh, yeah, you know. Oh, John Thire. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I know that this plays real fucking well on, a, on an audio podcast it's, or a video podcast yeah. where we don't show what we're doing, but fuck you, John Thire. It's something called Nerdle. I'm not even going to look. I know no. it's it's Wordle with math. Yeah. It's like, Wordle, I already, but with math. I already fucking hate Wordle. <laughs> So, we'll just we'll just stay uh, we'll just stay far. Oh far, shit, far. Polly! That's my whole first segment. Oh, good, cool. I'm gonna go watch some <laughs> the curling, one true right? video game. I'm gonna go watch some curling, oh, y'all. Can... I just got a lot. I just got five out of eight on that on that nerd. <laughs> I'm a, Don't I'm, worry, I'm not gonna actually. I'm very stoked that. for you, John. Just, Thank you. I'm over the moon ecstatic. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to help. Mm. Just, you know, maybe if the vanilla wordle isn't... Did you know that there's a lot of variants? All with different names you have to mute? Did you... Uh, have you played uh, Lick On? Uh, what's Lick On? <laughs> Lick On these nuts, bitch! <laughs> Got him. Got him again! Got I you, feel about the way I feel about the cross. <laughs> ah. Ah. This is our ASMR podcast. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Me. All right. John Cryer Thire. All right. 
How about we get rid of, get get through the video games first? It's the boring oh. part. Okay. He said with venom on his voice. Let's do the one I feel. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, oh no. Oh, <laughs> baby. Let's do the one I feel kind of okay about. Okay. Oh. Um, I played Webbed. Um, it's a new Steam game. Uh, it's a new indie game, and it's very adorable. You play as a very. It's a platformer. You play as a very adorable spider. And you um, web swing around everywhere, and the web swing feels fun and good, and it's fun to cool. do it. And it's a really, really big world too. Um, the setting is pretty. It, it's if you look at the if you just Google it, webbed game. Um, it's got a very immediately striking and pleasing aesthetic. I yeah. think. Yeah, it's it's um, pleasant. I think Ghosty was talking about this one actually. Yeah, it's ple- it, pleasant's a good word. Yeah. Um, if you. So it's also one thing that's fun about it is it's got a pretty fanciful setting. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not just like spiders and ants and animals. It's like every there's like a bunch of um, like the ants are all building a giant, a big mecha ant. Oh, oh, okay. (laughs) The bird, the the bird final boss lives on an island, like a floating island in the sky, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like. Excellent. It's it's and, uh, and like, you have to build a balloon to fly up to the the bird lair. Like it's very it's very silly. Um, it's a cute concept. I, I, found, I like it. Yeah, I found that aspect of the tone endearing. Mm-hmm. Um, so one pacing, so one pacing quibble, I think, is that I th- I kind of hated this game up front because it's got three big levels. The back two took me about a half hour each. The first one took me over two hours. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, it is weird. The first one is the one where you are going into the world of the ants and helping them build their mecha ant and getting all the stuff for that. And it is primarily concerned with lots and lots of physics puzzles where you are like using your web to pick up a gear and move the gear someplace else. Oh, this feels like this feels like it takes two hours. Yeah, this feels like Pikuniku when I played it. It was a very mm. physics-based platformer where you have to do th- like it's almost like Untitled Goose Game in a way too, where there's like you're you're doing you're doing some physics stuff here and there, but like yeah, this this gives me Piku Niku vibes. Where it you know what you have to do, it's mm-hmm. just very fiddly. Yeah, you just have to fiddle. I you just have that. to fiddle with it until yeah. until it works. Yeah, why isn't the gear landing in the thing? Okay, I'll just fiddle with it until it works. And I think in the ant section especially, there's a lot of like kind of muddly communication. I wasn't really sure. I mean, I said you know what you need to do, but sometimes I didn't know what I needed to do, and it wasn't because it was a puzzle. It was because, um, it was just it just wasn't really clear. Um. And that was very frustrating. So I was like, I hate this. Um, and, I, and I put it down. Oh. I was like, I'm never going to play this again. <laughs> and then about an hour later, I picked it up and you, finished it. You, you poly that um, shit. Yeah. And the rest of the levels are more about the movement, which is a lot more fun. Yeah. Um, but then the rest of the levels are also full of a ton of collectathon stuff that doesn't play at all into the main game. <sighs> like, it feels so video game. Oh. It's It's just like... We are setting. We're going to make a spider game, and now we're going to populate it with a bunch of video game. And it's the most kind of like, mostly it's like the most boring idea of that of fiddly physics puzzles and then collecting shit. Mm. <laughs> um, and that really got in the way of me enjoying the really fun movement, which again was very pleasing and nice. Mm. Um, I think, uh, like, I felt a, a little bit about this with a short hike, which had a lot of video gamey stuff in it. Yeah, it did. A short hike was just like right over the line where like or like it stepped right up to the line but didn't cross it. Mm-hmm. So I still came away from it having enjoyed it and enjoyed the ambient. Webbed goes the one step over the line where it's like, oh, I don't like this. Oh, I feel bad about I, I don't like this one bit. Um, mm. and, and, and I came away with just kind of like annoyed because it was like it's also it's also just very twee. Um, oh, yeah. So I kind of felt like, yeah, I, this is the only IGF game I rec- nominated game I recognized. Oh, and I was like, yeah, that's, this was- that's what that's what I remember you making a tweet earlier in the week uh-huh. about IGF games. Uh, and I was like, <laughs> I wonder what game John is talking about and if we will hear about it. <laughs> Literally just like, OK, yeah, this is I have played an indie game. This is the this is the image of an indie game and indie game. Yeah. 
Their other game that I see on Steam looks kind of neat. It's called Stab, Stab, Stab. And it that's looks, a good, that's a provocative <laughs> title. And it looks like you're this two-legged thingamadooter, and you just like, and you've got this pointy beak, and it looks like you just stab things. <laughs> kind of looks like, it, it looks, I mean, it looks like it's got some Masso Core platformer stuff in it too, I uh-huh. guess. But it definitely looks like you, you stab stuff and you kind of cling to walls and stuff. Cute. Kind of it definitely looks like a physics puzzle or t- physics puzzle or two, but like if it's just kind of owning that, maybe yeah. I'd, instead of instead of fucking jump scaring me with physics puzzles, <laughs> jump scared by physics bit. puzzles in the book. Be a, <laughs> Lance the Bean. Um, <laughs> I would feel a little bit better about it. So I kind of came away from that feeling like, oh, okay, video games, huh? Yeah, video um, games. So video games, huh? Yeah. Sometimes uh, a video another- game can be a little too video game, and it's just like, man, this video game, there's a little too much video game here. Oh, wait, that was the positive game. Yeah. That was the positive game. Yeah. Which you still kind of came away from negatively. Uh-oh. Yeah. Um, so I finished Final Fantasy three last month, mm-hmm. uh-huh. um, and I came, you know, you may recall, I came away from it feeling pretty positive. Sure. Um. What I specifically said was this reminded me how much I love Final Fantasy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, because it was the proto- kind of the prototype of like Final Fantasy IV, or f- five games I love, um, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna jump right into another Final Fantasy game, and I booted up Final Fantasy IX. Oh. This is the second time I've tried it. The good one. Mm-hmm. It's not eight. You got the best one there. of all time. They got that on the back of the box. It's not eight. We're sorry. <laughs> <sighs> um, so I, so I, I, God, I forget what the trigger was, but I, I think it was just finishing Final Fantasy three, and like, I was like, iced heart, no, I closed ice heart to this game mm-hmm. for the whole for five last five years. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I played like ten hours of it in like twenty sixteen, I think. Um, and came away from it just kind of a little I didn't feel strongly about it I just kind of fell off it and then like at a certain point I was kind of like started to feel very negatively about it um, and X really liked it that was part of it um, <laughs> so and then like on a dime my heart just went what if Final Fantasy 9 is fucking great what, what if, if? What, what, if? If Fantasy 9, what if Final Fantasy IX is fucking great? And I think I brought that up on the last podcast. And I think Wright was like, eh, it's fine. Mm. And I think Polly was like, uh. <laughs> And I was like, and I and I had that defensive response I get once I'm invested. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. fuck y'all, you're wrong. Yeah. Final Fantasy IX is great. I I'm, think I'm I so- said I have no hate for it. It's it's fine. <laughs> it's not eight. Um, And so I, 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 I had a very open heart. And uh-huh. I jumped in, and I played it, and I played through the first disc, and I was like, "This is delightful." Um, I, I'm I, the the dungeons are cute and cute and short. The um, the stories and I love all of these characters. They're all really endearing. I like how they're very differentiated. Like in seven and eight, like the characters could kind of just meld together. Even in six, to an extent. Yeah. Um, and then in nine, they go back to being like, "Hey." We have a thief, a white mage, a black mage, and a knight. Yeah, like as you're starting when, party, like that's delightful. Yeah, like when six kind of stripped off, like most characters of that stuff, like that, like like I think seven was the one that did that the most, where literally anybody could do yeah. anything. I mean, eight did it. Eight yeah, did it a eight, lot. I mean, eight they had help. already leaned into it by that point, yeah. where like mm-hmm. six and seven kind of took those steps. Eight yeah. just leaned into every character is literally nothing. Yeah, like you can. There's even a button in eight that's like swap your junctions from one character from another. Yeah, like it, it's dire. Yeah. Nine is very differentiated. It does, as Colin points out in the chat, it has a rat dragoon who is great. Um, oh, she's I, so cool. She's so fucking cool. Beatrice is so Beatrix is so fucking cool. Yeah, I I love. I I I love uh, I love I love I love what's her name? For, I fucking forgot her name. I love her that much. Beatrix. Uh, Freya. 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 Freya's Freya. awesome. Uh, Beatrix is a character that I like, um, please murder me, ma'am. But also, <laughs> holy shit, you're a terrible person. Why are they trying to redeem you? <laughs> um, so I, I, 
So I was like pretty, have, I was having a good time and I got through the entire second disc feeling pretty good about it. I was just like, I, there, there's that whole set piece where you rescue Garnet from the castle before she's killed by the queen. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is pretty, this is good, The good. this is the good Final Fantasy. I love good Final Fantasy. There's some good Final mm -hmm. Fantasy set pieces in this game. Yep. And then at a certain point I was kind of like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of ready for the story to start. There you go. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to give it until the end of the second disc. Um, I'm not going to drop it, of course. I'm going to see it through to the end, but I'm going to give it the second disc before I start getting mad. Um, because I'm going to, at the, the I, I want to get to that act break and then for it to do something that pulls me in kind of grounds me in the world, grounds me in the characters, gets me invested emotionally, starts laying the groundwork for where I'm going to burst into tears at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. And then it doesn't do that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's just more set, it's just more set piece. Yep. Um, Ku just sucks. Terrible. I haven't finished the game, by Absolutely the way. Absolutely terrible villain. Yeah, I, I got a ways into disc three, and then I was so, I was like, I'm like not doing great, period. So like, yeah. The, the way that was manifesting for me was I was getting like seethingly mad thinking about the game mm -hmm. and like I was trying to try to play and I would start getting like viscerally mad and then I was like and I was just thinking I was looking at a walkthroughs table of contents like okay I've only got this much left um, and then I realized like okay I probably need to take a step back from this for a little bit <laughs> Yeah. until I can come back to it and engage with mm -hmm. it in a healthier way mm -hmm. um, instead of thinking I'll just grip my teeth and see it through so I can be done with it don't like that that's how you that's how you east nine yourself that's how you celeste yourself yeah. so there's just there just there's just no story here no <laughs> y'all like I like that is really why I struggled with that game because I could never find like what's my reason for pushing forward. Like, what's the thread? There are big story set pieces that they lead you to, but it's just like I this is, these are just stages in a video game, basically. Like if you want to yeah. kind of be reductive about it, oh, you're leading, you're you're using bad breadcrumbs to lead me from one stage to another in a video game is what I like felt the, like that whole game. Like the entire second disc is just like we're trying to find Kuja. Yep. Which is you know like that that the five hours of Final Fantasy VII we're we're trying to find <laughs> Sephiroth, but then in se seven they filled that up with cool episodes about the characters, and it ended with him killing Eris. Yeah. It was pretty substantive. Yeah. Good ultimately, follow through there. You created one of the yeah. most iconic scenes in gaming. Kuja is introduced, and he has this big dramatic. Final Fantasy villain theme, and then subsequently Beatrix kicks your butt. Yeah, <laughs> and then he and then he says some mincing RPG villain stuff, and then <laughs> and then dialogue. flies away. His dialogue just comes out of a fucking Final Fantasy villain dialogue generator. He's just he's just <laughs> trying to be Kefka Roth. Yeah, and yeah. yeah it, that's nothing, literally and all doing it is. nothing else. Yeah, and the difference is Kefka and Sephiroth were credible threats yes they did shit mm -hmm. they killed they offed major characters Ke kefka offed several major characters and on, their family on screen on screen and then and then destroyed the world <laughs> yeah kind of hard no to top one that is more of a credible threat than kefka <laughs> yeah and he does not introduce himself as being the jrpg villain he introduces himself as the as the wacky villain sidekick. And yeah, then yeah. So when he kills the emperor, it feels very substantive. Mm -hmm. Like Kuja strolls onto the screen, like I'm going to be the final, the final villain. Ha, mm -hmm. ha, ha. I, but you're going to be scared of me, even though I'm doing nothing. <laughs> and he just, and he just keeps doing that. He just keeps yeah. showing up, saying some villain cliches. And doing that, and just walks off. He has a, accomplished one thing and it's killing the queen mm -hmm. who also sucks. Yeah. Like, good job, hero. Good job. Yeah, like you done the you did the hard work for us, sir. How can we thank you? It it's like Yeah, it's it's Uh oh. Oh, I wasn't sure if that was me or John. <laughs> That's John keeping you in suspense. Not really built up to. It's not really a big story catharsis. Right. It's just like, okay, 
Uh, the, the man she likes is here, so she can be good now. Um, like, the queen is just kind of like a mincing cartoon villain, so yeah. when Dagger is, like, extremely sad about her mom dying, you don't really feel you it because you did not get yeah, because, any yeah. sense of their relationship. Yeah. Like, that's... <sighs> There's not. There's nothing here. There's there's the there's the romance with, um, Dagger and Zidane. There's Vivi having like an existential crisis every other, every every every, every now and then. Every fucking scene he's in. Um, he's like, why? Who am I? What is death? Dude, can we um, do something? <laughs> okay, let's do something to solve this issue. Uh, and then the game's just like, no, nah, nah, we just kind of like having that be there. It's a character. That's a thing. He doesn't know what death and people are. Freya's whole, Freya's like the only character who's like actually like face, who meaningfully like suffers yep. from one of the towns being blown up. Mm -hmm. And then she's just gone for most of yeah, this too. They just kind of <laughs> sideline her. It's like, okay, you There's, had a sad and now you we're, we're done with you. It's just, it's just texture. Yeah. It's just charm. Mm -hmm. um, it's Marvel movie. Oh God! Oh, oh man! <laughs> like, and and people and everybody keeps saying, well, it gets worse near the end. But the first disc is so good. The first couple discs are so good. And like, what? No, it's all bad. It just takes you two discs to realize. It took me yeah. two discs to realize that there's nothing happening. Are there and that's three, discs? Are there three there, or four discs? I can't remember. There's four discs. There's four. Oh, okay. Okay. It's, I can't it's not. Yeah. It's not that the game like starts off with a really strong, propulsive, story, dramatic story, no. and then it kind of shits itself. It just is. It just is coasting on surface level charm and very pretty art and, some, and, a, and a nice Umatsu score. And it makes you think that it's doing something when really it's not doing anything. Mm, maybe uh, that's enough for some people. And that's enough for some people. I mean, that's enough it's the same. for the, the vast internet it, at large that loves this game. And it's one of those like, I don't get it. Like this, this and Legend of Dragoon are my two biggest hangups oh. because I don't get it. What do you see in these? And it was just the exact same arc I had with Tales of Vesperia. Like, like the, oh, the game yeah. just did just oh. did nothing. I guess that ga that game almost did something where it had, <laughs> had the main character murder cops, which is pretty cool. And, and, then, pretty just, and then it just <laughs> that's rad. And then it just and then it just completely drops that for the back half of the game. So yeah. you, you don't get you don't get points for that. No. <laughs> so that's. <sighs> So, so that's that's just like I'm so I I just get really frustrated with this kind of RPG experience, especially because it's like it makes me feel alienated from friends. Where yeah. I'm like, what I mean, what do other people want out of these kinds of games? Because it is clearly I, we're clearly not aligned in this respect. Yeah, yeah I I just I, I, like any time we go into the Final Fantasy discussion with people, I have to just exit because I know that like. It's always going to be like Final Fantasy IX is going to end up in that conversation, and I'm going to be the person sitting there having these exact thoughts of what do you see in it? Because I feel like you're putting things there that aren't there. And if I say that, I'm being combative. Yeah, it's and it's it's really hard to put a put a to put a point on because it's just like I, I think it's like I think it's the it's the stuff that Final Fantasy VI, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VII are really really good at. It's the stuff Trails is really really good at is having stakes, is having real substantive yeah. twists yeah. that the game then plays out the consequences of in full. Mm -hmm. Like the end of Trails FC, the consequences of that Ooh. play out <laughs> the entire SC. And it play and it's beautiful yeah. and it's really strong. It's a real story. Mm -hmm. um, and I just feel like I fell in love with these games because of the strong character stories. Because I I loved seeing Frog's backstory and how that plays in, and then his con con climactic confrontation with Magus, and then how that plays out in the last third of the game where he sees Magus again. Is like fuck it, I don't care anymore. And then he goes and says goodbye to Cyrus's ghost. Like that's just. Like that's all so of that good. follow through is like that's in Chrono Trigger and none of it, none of it is in like eight or nine. 
Yeah. Uh, eight, eight, I, eight is the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it does a f- fuckload of nothing. Um, <laughs> and then it ends. Um, Chrono Cross, it, it's, I, I just feel like all of these, I just feel like all of these are weak, muddled, non propulsive stories that get by on their surface level charm, except that Final Fantasy IX is also not trying to be anything interesting. It's trying yeah. to be like an okay Disney movie. It's trying to be an okay <laughs> Disney movie that wants you to think that it remembers what was good about Final Fantasy 1 through 3. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, oh, man. So, I, I think this is just kind of, I'm coming to a head with a lot of issues with Square in general, and I think it's just that, in general, Final Fantasy is very unedited. They are making these games up as they go along. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, extremely. Like, now, what you f- can tell, especially with 9, with his how with, a, with how set PC it is, and how, like, mm-hmm. somebody had a lot of fun writing all these set pieces. I mean, you can get that a lot in 8, too, because there's, like, mm-hmm. there's like that assassination mission and stuff in, in, in 8, which plays out very similarly to the bronze stuff, I feel. Um, yeah, and, and remember how the, the big disc 1 con- con- confrontation at the end of 8 was Squall getting stabbed through the chest, yeah. which then is... <laughs> Immediately undone, immediately undone, and it oh, never no. matters again. Oh, he definitely died, right? Remember? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, like that. That like that has like really kind of become like like I feel that uh, as much as 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 Square's PlayStation One output is lauded, um, I feel that when you look at it a lot, it a lot of it doesn't hold up under this type of scrutiny, and you start seeing like these games that actually uh, they took all the wrong ideas from what made games like six and seven really great what made chrono yeah. trigger great they went forward and they completely like, like got up their own ass like because oh seven was hailed as the greatest looking rpg ever that's kind of we our have most have pretty important. graphics that's yeah. our most it, important thing now it's so much about the graphics and the set pieces and the cgs yeah Mm-hmm. Like the CGs, the CGs back then just felt like the can the the actual reward was getting yeah. to watch the CG, yeah. which is not as which does not isn't yeah. as it's lasting. It's not going to hold up <laughs> in no. twenty twenty two. Tom, I mean, it's cool. Watch, it's cool, cool watching Bahamut blow up a city, right? But uh, that can't. Be I, a I feel like. I feel like Xenogears falls into a lot of this. I think that Xenogears, there's long stretches that are really boring. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think that a lot of that cast is kind of wasted. I oh, think yeah. it is also pretty unedited in a lot. I just I just had something. I just got yeah. something out of that one. Yeah. Um, the turn with Id, the first time Id shows up, that was that got me. And it plays out in the consequences of that play out very nicely. Mm-hmm. And the romance really, really worked for me. Mm-hmm. Like I, I got some stuff out of Xeno gears. I'm not even going to necessarily tell everyone that it's like, they need to go play it. It's an essential RPG. It's just as good as Chrono Trigger FF six. Cause I don't, I don't think that's true. No, but, no. but I got more out of it there. Like, than Parasite I have Eve, eight uh, Par- across nine uh, Parasite Eve. That's a game that got it. That's game's oh, yeah. great. Uh, Vagrant story. Got it. Um, like those two games in, uh, in particular, I feel like got it. Whereas like yeah. a lot of the other stuff, like Chrono Cross, Final Fantasy VIII, and Nine, it's post Final yeah. Fantasy VII Identity Crisis. Yeah. We yeah. don't know what yeah. kind of game. What we don't even know. We don't. We're trying to make a follow. up We're not trying to make a new RPG. We're trying to make a follow up to Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, like everything is the fi- the follow up to Final Fantasy VII. And, and like fucking yeah. Xenogears was greenlit as a fucking as a Final Fantasy 7 script, then a Chrono mm-hmm. Trigger sequel, and then it became oh its own God. thing. Like, it was literally three things. Xenogears and Parasite Eve were both being made before Final Fantasy 7, yep. you know, took over the world. Mm-hmm. So I think that uh, that maybe speaks to some of their strengths, <laughs> is that I, I think as they went on, they were just more and more consumed in how do we follow Final Fantasy 7? Yep. Let's make... Let's make eight. Let's make this throwback mo- throwback game. Let's make a movie. But, oh like, boy, that worked. That then, turned out. And then we got bought by Enix. Oops. Damn. Um, so I'm just like, there are other RPG d- that when you zero in on Square and because you played Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI as a kid, like me, yeah. um, you can kind of stop seeing these problems that come from mostly just that mm-hmm. they do not. They are writing from instinct and 
uh, most of the time those instincts are very good. Like I think Sakaguchi and I think Kitase have very good story instincts mm-hmm. that lead to decisions like let's let's kill Aerith and see how that let's play let's have Kefka be the villain. Like um even if they're still flying by the seat of their pants, they can make coherent visions that are ultimately really satisfying. Yeah. Um and I think they just lost track of that. I just think that they were they were too consumed in trying to follow up seven. And the these games are just consistently disappointing me. Yeah. And I think I would rather I I it's not, I remember really liking ten. Yeah, ten is one that I know like I, I uh, am pretty sure just like just having seen people stream a bit of that over the last few years, like yeah, I think that shit still holds up. I think that like that is like where they kind of got back on the horse and were able to kind of tell a good story. Uh, have some good mechanics and stuff again and, and, and things felt right um, with the world, you know. Yeah, like I didn't think that uh, it's just this little period here. There's these these games that are very celebrated, especially among people my age, because mm-hmm. I played these. I had access to these games as a kid. A lot of people my age who had access to them as a like you, you, my friend Shark, Rhett, y'all played these games when you were like 18, 19. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and you were... And don't get me like, wrong, like I like I told you when we were talking about this earlier this week, Final yeah. Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX, Chrono Cross, all four of these games are games that I bought when they came out and I played them to fucking death and I didn't viscerally hate them at the time. It's when I came back and looked at them with a more critical mm. eye and realized, what was I getting out of this? This actually doesn't hold up at all. I played those at the time because it was exciting being in that rush of post Final Fantasy VII, blowing your fucking wig back. Hmm. Can I share Seven, my thoughts so on eight and nine? Sure. Go for it, right? I remember when I finished eight, I just felt so nothing, <laughs> <laughs> and I just hit new game and started playing a, a new file. For like an hour, yeah, and then I and then I just had this feeling of like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Like, I didn't get anything out of this. I'm not going to get anything out of it a second time. So eight really did disappoint me at the time, oh, contrary God. to what Polly said, mm-hmm. to the point where I didn't buy nine. But then I played it in college. I borrowed it from a friend there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So nine didn't hurt me the same way eight did. <laughs> but I finished it. It was just like, yeah, that was fine. Like. I'm not not necessarily going to say it was good or it was just bad. It wasn't bad, but it was just like it was fine. It was all right. And then I, that that same friend that I had borrowed nine from, the reason they lent it to me is because they had the new hot game on the play. Oh no, it was PlayStation One. They had Chrono Cross. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I I remember going in and watching them fight the final boss and being like, oh, that's what they did to Lavos, huh? Oh god, Aww. man! And then that's getting a Brutal. remaster now, and man, people are going to be telling us all over again how great Chrono Cross is. I can't no. wait! I can't wait! <laughs> At least it comes with Radical Dreamers. That's, that's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty neat. Yeah, like yeah. I'm happy if only just for that. But like, a, like, what are they going to do? Like, are they going to Saga Frontier it and go back and make like the, make the other character stories not be bad? Are they going to make you all the characters that be would be good? That would be a cool idea. It is a Kawazu game after all, so. No, it's not. <laughs> it's got Kawazu all over it. That Chrono game Cross has... does, is not a Kawazu game. I'm almost certain he was involved with that game. I don't know. I can Kawazu. I, 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 am, I am defending Kawazu's pride okay. here. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> For some reason, Chrono Cross, I just. I smelled it and was like, I'm staying away from this one. I don't know. I, and I love Chrono Trigger. Motherfucker, Chrono I remember Cross. the night. I remember the night before that game came out. I remember where I was. I remember driving to the store the next day, skipping school to get that fucking game. I, like, that's how diehard square I was at the time. Uh, so I remember God, that funny. shit. I remember everything from that that That's time crazy. period so fucking vividly. Weird. That's so cool. Kawazu worked on Saga Frontier. He worked on Legend of Mana. <gasps> he worked on Saga Frontier 2. He did not touch Chrono Cross or Chrono Final Fantasy. Chrono is Final just so, like I could swear he was behind that game's battle system <laughs> or the fucking um uh or, or how progression worked because it's literally the saga system of how your characters level up. Oh, you said Saga Frontier, and then I remembered, oh, this is why I stopped buying Square RPGs on PlayStation <laughs> 1. Man, I, I vividly remember one of your Square, one of your SMPS lists that was just oh, yeah. like, 
Square forgot how to make RPGs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, you play Saga Frontier, Final Fantasy VIII, and then the first, half of the first disc of Xeno Gears in a row. Woo. You're going to be yeah, a little yeah, fucking yeah. exhausted by You're their like, post Final Fantasy VII content. You're just like, so, all so, right, so, fuck it, I'm done with this. Let's go check out Legend of Dragoon. <laughs> Saga, I, I, I begrudge nobody. <laughs> Nah. Having a weird, weird, bad time with yeah. Soccer Frontier. That game's Especially weird. going into it immediately after Final Fantasy VII and thinking you're getting yeah. the same kind of thing. I think it when I hard. started realizing that Square wasn't doing it for me anymore was when um, uh, uh, Lunar the Silver Star uh, Complete came out. And I was playing mm -hmm. that game and how much just wild joy it gave me and it was like i never Aww. felt it i never felt this Aww. while playing final fantasy 8 9 or chrono cross they <sighs> yeah it's, it's funny because go ahead i i played lunar one and two on the sega cd oh, I, so i already I did knew too. <laughs> i played those on the but oh, okay but, but having those newer versions was such a just like yeah they they, they were so much like, i'm I'll, i will say that they are better games i'm sorry like I know that like mm. liking the Sega CD versions is like uh like, like you're a purist and you're a cooler person for doing it. I like the complete versions more. Sorry, like I mm -hmm. I, I still love those Sega CD games, but I prefer like and that's when I realized that it wasn't Square doing it for me anymore. It was because I was like, oh right, and I played that and I went and played like Thousand Arms, which was another kind of weird off the beaten path kind of uh, mm -hmm. RPG. And it was like, all right, like this is the kind of feeling RPGs I'm are to fucking get. fun. Yeah, like, and I and I never kind of had that same kind of joy that like. With, well, that's with that's Lunar one and, and 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 Thousand Arms, for instance. That's one more one more piece of this puzzle. In addition to Final Fantasy VIII, Chrono Cross, and Final Fantasy IX having bad, boring stories, they're also fucking miserable to play yeah. because Final Fantasy IX, the ATB bar continues progressing oh. while the animations are playing, and most of the animations will take like ten seconds. It takes like so you as as it zooms in on Vivi as he casts his spell, and, and then it zooms in on the enemy as it as, as it hits the enemy, and then it zooms back out for ten seconds. Your bar is progressing. Yeah. So even if you set the ATB speed to max, and even if you haste everybody, the combat progresses at pretty much the exact same yeah, speed. Yeah, it doesn't fucking uh. matter. It's turn based. Yeah. The ATB doesn't matter. Yeah. It is so it's such a fucking busted version of what was, you know, like a yeah. pretty old hat battle system at that point. It mm -hmm. sucks. Yeah, how do you I fuck hate up, it. how'd you fuck up your bread and butter? I'm really glad yeah, I'm glad ten had a different battle system. Yeah. Yeah, they needed um, it. They needed to move on. And, and then I so I've just, so this has been me the last week. I've been like looking at footage of like Breath of Fire three and Wild Arms. And just mm -hmm. like Breath of Fire three, especially, is just like oh, instant battle transit. Yeah, instant battle transitions. It just yeah. snaps in. You're fighting, yeah. and then it's over. Uh, like I love Breath of Fire three. It's like miraculous coming off of fucking any Final Fantasy Latter nine Square and game. like lo like getting the getting the transition animation, panning around the environment because we can't load the fucking models, loading in each model one by one, and then like twirling <laughs> around a character, but while it loads up the menu, it's like oh my god, like nine was miserable. Just like any time you got in a fight, it was just oh kill me. I, I have, I'm playing a version with fat with fast forward, so that I helps. Didn't have that luxury in 99. Yeah. In, in no, I mean, I played, don't worry, I played all of eight without that, so uh, don't worry. Uh, I, I feel you. Um, I have to, I feel like seven was a little bit snappier. ATB mattered in seven. It did, yeah. So I, yeah. I, I, I maxed that out and then had a good time for most yeah. of the game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these, these, there are other RPGs that are just brisker and more fun and then also have stronger stories. I think um, Breath of Fire 3 would treat you right in all of those regards. Absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a break from. I'm still going to take a break from RPGs for a bit. You need to. But, you need to. But people, people, RPG fans, myself, oh. every, I have played the only PS1 RPGs I have played to completion um, are the Sweet Codens beside that aren't Square games. Right. Like oh, that's oh, that's right. fucking dire. That is, There's so yeah. many non-Square RPGs. Yeah. And and, and Kingsfield, um, like. I'm just been tunnel visioned my whole life because Chrono Trigger was so good. Yeah, that like I think that that's how 
I think that that's how it happens for a lot of people. Like a lot of the people that I talk to, you know, they came up around the same time as me and like, you got Final yeah. Fantasy IV, uh, Final Fantasy yeah. VI, and Chrono Trigger, all back to back. Like that, uh-huh. that was what you got back to back. And then like, then everything, like everything after that is just like, well, I can't dislike it because, you know, it spawned from these three really great games. And I feel that that's really yeah. what's... Well, that's really kind and of... FF7. That's, yeah, that's and FF7. Yeah, and FF7. Like, and then 7 just went fucking nuclear, like, yeah. popularity-wise. Yeah, like, so, like, I feel that, like, th- there's this weird kind of attachment where they can't look at things critically at this point because mm-hmm. it's just like, you know, like what you like. I'm not saying people don't like the things they like. Uh, I think that they I mean, need we, to be clear. About, that's not what we're saying. Like, We've talked about liking Xenogears. Like I don't. I, I think it's. I think it's completely good and great to play like weird mixed bag experiences and get stuff out of them. Yeah. I don't begrudge that at all. No. It's. It's just the tunnel vision. It yeah. is. The 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 best games of all time are these five that square I, games that I played when yeah. I was, that I was that I played when I when I was twelve to nineteen. Yeah, because because the, the world Feeling is so much pretty bigger than that. with that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we're. I mean, the world is just a lot bigger than that, yeah. and it the might even be square. bigger than RPGs. There oh might even God. be. There might even be me- media that's not RPGs that I should engage with someday. <laughs> nah, uh, nah. Uh, who, who, who would do Unless that? It's music. If it's music, then sure. Yes. Because <laughs> music is better than video games, but nothing is better than Square RPGs, right. obviously. There you go. Clearly, nothing is better than Square RPGs. <laughs> have, have we... That was like... A, I felt like I was performing an exorcism. That was... <laughs> I was so mad about Final Fantasy IX all week, y'all. I, I kind of thought, this is a weird game to get, like, viscerally angry about, because to me, it's just fine. Yeah. Well, that's... Like, 8 that's, was the one that hurt me. <laughs> I mean, that's just the thing. There's, like, if it's mostly bad and then has, like, some really cool parts, Mm -hmm. that's more to grab onto. This is just, this is, like, this is just, like, cotton. It's just, like, (laughs) it's just, like, a fine, it's, like, just a fog in my head. I don't know. I think when you said Marvel movie, that really did put it into focus for me. Yeah, that really hit it home, I think. Yeah, like if I'm getting a Marvel movie experience out of like a like a two like a 1990s Square RPG, that's that is the, what I want the least. Yeah, I want that the yeah. least of any possible experience I could be getting out of one of these games. <laughs> so I think that, that kind of fits though how it's like a series of big set pieces with these uh-huh. characters you kind of like, and then it never really culminates in a whole lot overall. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna be in the eight is better crowd, but I oh, do feel fucking- like. <laughs> I do feel like like if nine has a nice ending, then I'll probably yeah. feel I'll, I'll feel strong because I do like the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, but like eight was going for something by like being inside Squall's head the whole game. Yeah, like you got a pretty it, it, there's a sort of a character study angle there of an angsty teen that I kind of that kind of resonated with me, even if literally everything about it was else about it was just fucking noise. <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I haven't even gotten that much of a thread out of nine. So, <laughs> all right. Yeah. I, uh, so that is that is my that was my video game experience, and I'm not going to talk about any more video games for this the podcast. Dark novel. Well, I'll talk about burning. yours. Rhett, hi. What have you been up to? <laughs> I I figure I'm just going to open with this one. I'm playing an RPG. What? Hell what? yeah! You do that. <laughs> It's not by Square. Oh, well, hey, I yeah. color me intrigued. It's the Noof series I have the tunnel vision for. Uh-oh. Uh I'm playing The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold <laughs> Steel 2. Yeah! Surprising no way. I took like a whole two weeks off and was like, yeah, that cliffhanger is really, really it's fucking a- bugging me. i got to get this over with. we got to find out what happened. We, I have to know. we got to go back, Reen. <laughs> Fucking read. Um, so really can't talk story about this one other than it's a lot better. Like immediately, hey, shit's happening. Yeah, shit's finally happening. The pacing in this one so far is like aggressively fast. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it goes. It's kind of wild. Like the ways in which they'll just be like, "Let's get on with it," are so funny coming off off of Cold Steel One mm-hmm. that just luxuriated and savoring every moment like you know the whole like 
and then they make you go to the train station and buy the ticket and then right. you ride the train the and you play is, cards with your friends on the way on the train yeah i think I, th- I think the thing is you kind of like like they're giving you something to look back at and appreciate because like yeah. once you get the cold steel too it's like normal life's over you can yeah. only look back at that now like it's very real life in a way where you can mm-hmm. only kind of look back at your high school life and be like man there was Things were certainly a hell of a lot simple when I just had to go buy a train ticket and go play cards with Thee. Yeah. <laughs> I just mean like more like harsh mechanical things where it's like you'll go to the end of, end of a dungeon, fight a boss, and the characters will be like, oh, should we head back now? And you click yes, and it just teleports you back to town. Yeah, like they it, sped it, up a lot like of that Like things like that where just like anywhere they can kind of cut to save time, yeah. they will let you do it now instead of just being like, Walk and it then off, re- baby. And then you walked back to town, and then you <laughs> went to the inn. Ah. Like they'll just cut straight to you g- handing in the quest. Yeah. Like little things like that that's make it feel a little snappier and yeah. more modern. Yeah. So I did notice that the game does not have chapters like the other uh, Trails games do. Yeah. It just has Act One, and then so far I've been like Act One, Part One, Act One, Part Two, Act One, Part Three. <laughs> And it's but still those are technically all, chapters, but they're just. But those are all way shorter way, than a chapter yeah. would be in Cold Steel. Yeah, because gotcha. it makes the game feel a little faster. A lot faster, because I noticed one of them was like, the critical path was so hilariously short. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just say what it was like without any you know sure, con- sure, sure. context. Where it's like, you go to town, you go to dungeon from the first game, and there's a boss at the front door. Yep. <laughs> so, so they don't actually make you do the dungeon again. You just immediate boss fight. Uh, you go back to town, and then you walk to another town. And if you're and if you want, you can just avoid every random battle on the way. Yep. Uh, you get to the second town. You talk to three event triggers. There's some cutscenes, talky talky talky. Then there's another boss fight that you have to lose, and then there's another <laughs> boss fight, and that's like the entire sub act. Yep is three boss fights, one you don't have to win. But the actual reality of me playing that was like, after the first boss fight, I went back to town, and then you go to the Bracer Guild, and they give you two optional quests. Uh, one of them's, you know, the monster Kill hunt. The monster. I did that. Kill the monster. I forget, I forget what the other one was, but, you know. Oh, yeah. it's a it's another fight. Yeah. Um, The boss fight was much tankier than I expected, <laughs> So the first time I lost, and then the second time I realized, oh, I'm using like this pure melee team because I'm just picking uh, every girl in the yeah, party yeah, now. Yeah, that, that's your play style in yeah, this game. Yeah, my play it? style is all girls. Yeah. <laughs> Despite the it fact does, that Reen is like the most busted protagonist. It's it's kind of fun having to come up with these weird strategies by doing things like not having a healer. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. So, so... uh I found out that three of these characters of the four have AT delay. Oh yeah, we can fuck <laughs> so shit up. I just so the second time that boss just did not get just a turn don't off give him because a turn. I just AT delay, AT delay, speed us up. Okay, strength us up. Okay, we're just we're just hammering on this poor thing <laughs> for like thirty turns in a row. It didn't get to move because then at some point it got paralyzed as well, and then everything turned into a crit. Nice. And because it was only paralyzed for one turn, but it never got that turn. It never got that turn, nice. So I think the combat is more fun than it was by the end of Cold Steel because I haven't quite broken it as much yeah. immediately. Yeah. Like the one Master Quartz that's like, give 25 CP back for every enemy <sighs> kill. That's been massively nerfed right yeah. now that I have it at like nine yeah, at it's... level three. Like they they made some obvious nerfs to things that were completely broken before. Mm-hmm. Like Alisa's like second arrow thing doesn't oh, give yeah. you CP up over time anymore. It yeah, just gives you twenty one. That was crazy. <laughs> um, so back to the like the flow of this chapter. So I do the two optional quests, and then on the way to the second town, you can go off the main path, and there's a secret not really secret, but there's an optional dungeon. Mm-hmm. Trails doesn't do that. That's so Ooh. weird. Like when you actually run into something like that. Like, like they do. Well, they did the towers. Uh, they towers were optional in. Um, yeah. In, it's it? been a while yeah. though. Since, yeah. Since there were just like major like an locations. Optional, that like didn't... go out of your way to find this because we're not yeah. telling you it's there. Yeah. Well, the first time I found one, I was like, "Wait, I didn't have to come here." The game didn't did try I? to pull me out and say, "No, we can't go here yet." 
Yeah, it's weird. It's like, oh, it's just letting me go up to the thing. Oh, they're going to turn me away at the entrance. The entrance will be sealed until later in the game. Oh, oh, we're just inside now. Oh, oh, uh... we're going through a whole dungeon. Oh, there's a boss at the end. Whoa, this was all optional. <laughs> so it's like really surprising. So then do that, get to the second town. And instead of talking to the event triggers, I just talked to every NPC in town and found two non-marked quests. Yeah. Another one, another one, which also brought me to an optional dungeon with a little boss at the end. So like the main path was aggressively short, but like if you just go out of your way and do everything, like it felt a, a, completely a regular chapter. properly. Yeah. Yeah, a regular chapter. And it's so it's refreshing after the first game where the main path in that one was so padded i guess and kind of oh, slow yeah. plotting yeah. that i got mm -hmm. to the point of i am doing no side content oh you're giving me a list of chores for the day and reen is throwing it in the trash <laughs> oh I, I got i got a c for this chapter you got the you got the grail locket and we're like all right we're done with side quests i think i got the grail locket right after i had given up on side oh. quests because i got the gladiator yeah, belt okay. and was yeah. like okay that's good that's enough. good enough yeah that that was always yeah. my cutoff point when I when I when I yeah. tell myself I'm gonna stop doing quests and then I don't um, is like when I get the Grail locket and like okay I can if I want to ignore these quests I will now and I yeah. know I did I know I did that in the Sky games uh, but but in Cold yeah. Steel I literally did every quest in every game. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Cold Steel one definitely burned me out by the end, oh, but so like it's good God. it's good that I'm feeling refreshed in this one and like. Yeah actually wanting to talk to the NPCs. It's funny when you talk to an NPC and they're just like, fuck off, I'm working. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's some good, like, lore, though, with, like, the state of the nation right now for oh, these characters. God, it's like, real tenuous. Some stuff was hitting a little close to home about, oh, like, yeah. <clears throat> oh, you're just, you're just, the way they're, like, straight up almost saying, like, you're using the current situation to funnel money, money to the wealthy was like Ooh, shockingly oh, accurate boy. to our own current situation. I'm like, Ooh. what the fuck? This is not a recent game. Like, it's just when stuff hits like that is so yeah. funny. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I found that like throughout throughout all of Cold Steel, the analogs between Cold Steel and reality were just like, oh boy, you're pulling your pulling your shirt yeah. collar out a little bit. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> It's like, huh, maybe maybe things are always actually like that. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Yeah. That's kinda that's kinda what I get from media. A lot of the times is watching something from like the seventies and being like, Oh, things have always been bad. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? It's kinda, like? it's kinda comforting, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that nothing ever gets fixed is maybe not. Maybe super not comforting. the greatest feel in the world. Eh. God, what, what was the Life, life is good here, but oh, I, there was some line about taxes I forget, but it was just like, oh, yeah, yep, same, buddy. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of girls in this game. That's another thing. <laughs> That's, uh, that is, That's uh, my, that my, is called my, Steel um, in its entirety. They're really leaning into, the, like, not harem, well, I guess kind of, there's a lot of girls. <laughs> it's It's nice. I could make I could probably make two whole parties with, with all girls at this point. Yeah. And I'm wondering when the game is or if the game is going to have you do that. When the game is going to be like, all right, bucker. <laughs> it's it's almost aggravating where it's like, oh, man, I've got so many characters now. I don't know who to bring. <laughs> Favorite make, is the lowest levels. That was my choice. That was my I mean, strat. you level so quickly in these games when you're behind. Like, it mm. really kind of doesn't matter if you bring, like, a level 68 or a level 64. Like, the, the 64 will just, boop, like, right just up right immediately. Up. Um, yeah, story is real good so far. I've, I'm kind of at the point where it's going to have to take another turn, and I'm not sure where it's going to go immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'm getting towards the end of Act 1. So who knows what the hell Act 2 is. Yeah. And I, there's a thing, there's a check they write at the end of Cold Steel 1 that I'm really happy to see how they have integrated that into the story. Mm -hmm. And every time, because I am so stupid, I'm just not thinking basically about what will happen next. And every time they do it, I'm like, oh, the masters of the craft, genius. <laughs> 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 where they do the, like the same thing four times in a row and yeah. every time I'm surprised every time every time you're like a little dog <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty it's always pretty fun and surprising when 
when the writing is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You forget. There's it's easy to that. forget what good writing is, so I think. Yeah. But it's so easy to predict because they're just doing the same thing four times in a row so far. And will continue to for the rest of the game, probably. I mean, that was, that was literally me finishing Trails from Zero was just like, Okay, they're not gonna they're not gonna do do anything with that though with that part of the game. That's just they're just gonna let that yeah. thread dri- dribble off. Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> nope. They wrote a real story. They wrote a real story. They wrote a real story. Imagine writing a real story in an RPG. It's so wild. <laughs> I think the one biggest flaw, obviously, so far is that they wrote one story and then made it into two games. Yeah, I mean that's that is a common thing for Falcom, like as far back as East, because East 1 and 2 were supposed mm-hmm. to be one game and then they split oh, it. <laughs> it's very common, it's very common among like fantasy novels also. Yeah. Like they yeah. will, yeah. a lot of, like, a lot of time they will just end on, we have closed out like one small satisfying episode mm-hmm. um, in this person's life. The grander arc we barely <laughs> Unrevealed at yeah. this point, so so keep that's reading. definitely how like first chapter goes. I think yeah. Cold Steel One was the one that kind of bumped me out a bit because it felt like they hadn't even closed off any sort of chapter. Arc. Yeah, it was just and now here's the huge cliffhanger. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that would that would make me that would bump me out a bit too. Yeah, uh, it's excuse me. It's sort of that I. I feel like I trust him at this point. It's sort of where, where yeah. I'm coming from with it. Trust like I can, Falcon. yeah, but I get what you mean. Yeah. I'm not sure if this one is going to hit the highs that the, the, the two crossbell games did for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. saying like guaranteed game of the year or whatever, where it's like, okay, we'll, we'll see how the year goes. It's still February. Yeah. We got 10 months. Yeah. That'll be gone by tomorrow. <laughs> Fucking, <laughs> I know it is a little scary when you start playing these long games. I'm like, well, how many how many do I actually realistically get through if they each take at least two weeks? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh god, oh god, they always take me at least three weeks. Like with these ones, especially. Yeah. Like that's at least three weeks if I if I'm keeping at it. And the Cold yeah. Steel games just only kind of get bigger. Uh, I okay. I am vowing to not immediately jump into three. You like my pacing wise. that I figured out before. I think two is like a good like break point. Like when I when I finished two, like I yeah. was I wasn't like oh man I need Cold Steel three now. Like I was just kind of like yeah I think I liked where that I liked where they dropped me for now. I like I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna be Jones yeah. and Ford in about three months, but I like yeah. where you dropped me. I like where you put things. That was an interesting play. The vibe I get is that one and two are obviously super connected at the hip, and then three and four seem like a different yeah. arc. Yeah. And I say that, you know, also having played Azure and kind of knowing some of what where things are going. Yeah. 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 You got like you've played the games that like that, that 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 three and four especially are going to be referencing a lot. Yeah, that was the other thing is when three came out, everyone was like, You gotta play Crossbell first. Yeah. <laughs> <You gotta> play- <laughs> uh, also they- also I will say, um, Polly, it did sound like Cold Steel Three was another case where they were like writing a lot of checks to be cashed in the next game. Oh boy. God, I remember finishing three and just being like, oh my god. Like I remember it was pretty high on my game of the year that and I'm pretty sure that was that, yeah. that was my exact verbiage of this game wrote so many checks. Oh my <laughs> god, that four has to cash. And then it does. Cool. I'm just thinking like, okay, if I play three and four next year, then I'm technically caught up for whatever the next one is called. Yeah. Reverie. Reverie. So it's like it 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 seemed impossible to catch up on trails, but now I'm doing it and it's like, okay, okay. You Still just get, fun. I'm not you get hooked. Yeah. You don't realize you get, it's happening. I mean, Cold Steel One did take me like you yeah. know on and off for like two months. Yeah. It was, yeah. It's a much slower game, whereas this one is like, oh yeah. Hits the ground running. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, we got another Xenoblade coming. I just remember that now. We do. Oh god. We have Xenoblade. <laughs> man, like I, I'm honestly extremely happy. I want to be excited. About, really I want to be excited. About, like we got a new Xenoblade coming. Fucking Front Mission One and Two. <laughs> front Mission One and Two are getting a, like a little, cool little remasters, dude. I'm so happy. That's really cool. I love That's the cool. Front Mission games. Those games are so nice. fun. That's, and two had never really gotten a full no um, hand translation either, so that's like really cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Looked really yeah. good. 
I was at work during that, so I couldn't, you know, watch it live, obviously. And I just saw tweets about Xenoblade 3, and I started tearing up a little bit. <laughs> like, Aww. live alive, uh, we got a lot. Like, Square yep. is kind of on. Like, Square's building up a lot of goodwill. And so you got to wonder when they're going to fucking drop the ball. <laughs> it's going to be NFTs, you know it. Um, <laughs> that's where it's going to be. That's where they're going to fumble. Uh. Um but it'll be in Final Fantasy fourteen. They're gonna fu- they're gonna NFT the oh, shit out of. It. No. They're gonna oh. NFT the shit. That's my prediction. You can mark that anywhere you want on this episode of the podcast. They're gonna NFT the shit out of Final Fantasy fourteen, and that's. It's a be- lot more dire than than my prediction of just FF sixteen being bad. Oh God, yeah, that would that would suck too. But yeah, like Square's on a fucking roll right now with what they're doing yeah. in terms of bringing their games back, like making them relevant again. It's like yeah, they're not putting out the exact original mm-hmm. games, but the stuff that they're putting out um, to, to to be sort of like maybe not a definitive version, but like a a a, a, cool, a cool new thing to excite get, to get excited about, even if you're already a fan and like have it and yeah. like that. I think they're mm-hmm. doing a really good job with that shit. I, I'm yeah. really. I mean, I play, I love the pixel remaster. Like even the fucking yeah. phone versions of old Final Fantasy games are pretty good. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. I was gonna mention those Final Fantasy VI pixel remaster comes out. That's coming out. Pretty like, soon. Yeah, like that. And like I, I, that's the one I think most people have been waiting for when it comes to these remasters. Because I mean, Final Fantasy VI is like when you look at that game's presentation versus five, even just five, which was like mm-hmm. you know the, at, at the pinnacle of yeah. its time when you to make that jump to six in that thirty-two meg cart. And what they were doing <sighs> graphically and sound wise with that game and how they're going to like and what they've been doing with the music and shit for these remasters and how it's been on fucking point. Like, I'm so yeah. fucking stoked for six. Yeah, it seems like they're doing additional enhancements to six to kind of not overhaul it, but like spice it up a little yeah, more than the yeah. others because that one is a little special. Yeah, like that one. If, if, if there's a game that is deserving of kind of being pushed yeah. up just a bit, it's Final Fantasy six. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So I did play another game. I don't want to spend too long on okay, this. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Because this is a long. Uh, I finished the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, oh. or the. Fr- oh, nice. I finished. I finished the first game in the collection. How this treat you? Uh, that was a long. That was a long pause. Oh, that was a very no. long pause. It's not bad. It's really good. But okay, so here's the thing. This is <laughs> the first game. Is the Cold Steel one oh. of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. There is a reason that the Western release of these just packaged both games together. Oh, okay. gotcha. Because Another... it very much is part one, one of two. Oh, okay, okay. Everything I've read is people saying, like, this game, after you have finished the last case in this game, they reveal some pretty big bombshells Ooh, okay. and just and they just let you sit on those for the sequel. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. Like, on a backlogged that game catalog site that we use now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like the first game has a uh, i use backloggery thank you very much okay <laughs> me and polly we use a better yeah, site yeah. so yeah. you use I'm- a fucking goodreads site that has a database of games which means they don't have all the cool shit i play on itch that makes me feel very smug and yeah. with it you only have for what it's like, worth. We were using Giant Bomb that had even less. Yeah, like it <laughs> didn't true. know. It didn't know what fucking what, what Trans Ruby. <laughs> yeah, it didn't have fucking Trans Ruby. But I think that like Giant Bomb has just long since stopped caring about that part of the site. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's probably a little bit less basic bitch than than Giant okay. Bomb. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Okay, so anyways, on this site, just as a glance, it was like, oh, the the first game has a 4.1, the second game has a 4.7. Woo! Like, Ooh. in general, everybody says the second game is the one that, you know, cashes the checks it's that the, the first one it's wrote. It's the trials and tribulations of the series. Yeah. I think even more so that they are connected as one story. Yeah, yeah. Like, they were kind of conceived as a duology. Right. Because I think it'll be finished by the end. I don't think there's going awesome. to be, like, a third game specifically. But yeah, it's it's solid Ace Attorney nonsense. Mm-hmm. It never gets as wild as I remember those GBA, the original trilogy, getting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think the pacing is such that it feels a little slower than I remember. We're like, I'm trying to see how much time I have in this game. Sorry, Steam. I think like the two games combined, people are saying are like 70, 60 to 70 hours. Mm-hmm. Which seems a lot. Yeah. Okay, but 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 looking now, I have thirty four hours in the first game, so maybe that is that accurate. Probably spot on. <laughs> which 
again, 34 hours seems a little long for five cases, one of which doesn't have a trial. Oh, oh interesting. And like, like the first case is just a trial because mm -hmm. it's the tutorial one, but then it's like the longest first case in the entire franchise. Oh, wow. Hmm. Like it's like over five hours long. Oh. Like, so sometimes the pacing does feel like you're maybe dragging this out a bit. <laughs> kind of like Danganronpa 3. Like where, yeah, like I like that game a lot, yeah. but it definitely felt like it was kind of dragging its feet yeah. a little bit. That one's pretty long too. Yeah, yeah I would say so. <laughs> See, for me though, I, I shotgun blasted like the last three cases in that game because I got sick. Wild sick enough me. to stay home from work and then not sick enough to just play three cases like in a row. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I really like the first great Ace Attorney game. There's there's a character. <laughs> part of like the localization nonsense one in this is that <laughs> there's a character that in the Japanese version is just named Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes. Holmes. <laughs> so in the localization to get around it, <laughs> they really they scratched their heads and said, How can we get this across that it's supposed to be Sherlock Holmes <laughs> without lawsuit happening they 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 thought for apparently like four years mm. and then they finally said okay here is this character's new name herlock sholmes <laughs> <laughs> it's so perfect because that's so fucking ace attorney with all the names they have in these games anyway for like yeah yeah so it's just like you i saw that and didn't fucking bat an eye <laughs> It's so goofy. And then if you have the Japanese VA on, you still hear them still saying still hear Sherlock Holmes. God, I almost said it wrong because I'm look I have a trading Steam trading card for Herlock Sholmes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. And then there's other name changes for in a similar vein. And I think one of them is actually good because it hides a twist a little bit. Oh, neat. Where otherwise it, it would be super immediately obvious. That's cool. So when they drop some info that doesn't become relevant in this game, but is set up for the sequel, I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? What? What? Like, <laughs> I can't believe they're like dropping like bombshells after you finish the last case. It's kind of wild. It's so it's like it's written in a way that feels like every case in this game could come back in the oh, next one. That's really cool. interesting <laughs> as like, oh, but here's the truth behind that incident. Mm. So even though like maybe this one is a little mid on its own, I think it is a significantly important setup for what sounds like a really cool sequel. I'm just say still like a good one of those types of games. Like if you were to kind of like look at your time spent, like I would probably say it's probably better than Justice for All. Yeah, I mean, when I think of those original games, I really do kind of think of one and three. Yeah, like the second one is just kind of... Uh, like that last case is pretty yeah. good, but I didn't really like much else. Yeah. I have yeah. the trilogy on my phone, which nice. is the only way I want to play any video games. <laughs> so the trilogy is good. They kind of they removed some of the sprites, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I know it's not I a perfect hate that. version. I hate that, but because but yeah, like I, I like I've got like this week, like I literally pulled out my 3ds because I have um, dual destinies and. Um, Spirit of Justice. Oh, nice. Uh, and I'm thinking about just like, like you know, the next couple of weeks, just diving into Dual Destinies. That's why I pulled out nice. my 3DS. So I've been kind of, I've been oh. kind of feeling that mood again. Uh, it definitely like having access to the great Ace Attorney through, you know, Rhett kind of yeah. has, has kind of maybe jump started my interest a little bit. So yeah, I'm looking to kind mm -hmm. of look at those uh, latter day Phoenix yeah. Wright games to see like, Cause I mean I didn't like, like but but the, like like Apollo Justice kind of just did not super land for me, um, and and it wasn't because it was like oh it's a different character like it wasn't that I just kind of mm -hmm. felt that the writing yeah. was like it was started like especially after fucking Trials and Tribulations which was incredible, um, mm -hmm. coming coming to that you know and then, and then like playing Dong and Rampa and being like oh like I just kind of like this way better than Phoenix Wright actually so yeah. wanting to go back to like. Phoenix Wright, which I know still kind of just does what it does and never changed itself at all. 
you know, I kind of mm-hmm. needed a lot of time away from that formula to feel like I could come at it fresh again. So I think now, like, I'm kind of like, okay, I think I've been away long enough. And, I've and like, Danganronpa is really kind of out of my system at this point. I can kind of probably mm-hmm. play those games now and have a renewed sense of enjoyment. Cool. I'm, I'm really I'm excited just up, for the first yeah. trilogy, just to kind of get that mm-hmm. get that sense of it. Did or you, certainly the first game. Did you ever play those? Literally, no. I played oh. the first half of the first game a couple times in high school. Okay, yeah, I think that you'll like these games then. Because I think that despite yeah, the oh, fact... Oh, it's very charming. Yeah, and despite I, the fact I'm, that I got burnt I like out that. on them, um, just because, you know, they, 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 they use the same mechanics every game and they, they don't change anything, I still think they got, they're, they're very funny. Uh, uh-huh. they're, they're, they're cleverly written. The cases are, for the most part, really well done. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think the series is gonna actually land pretty well for you. Oh yeah, I, I think it was um, playing Umineko and realizing yeah. like, oh, this is playing from Phoenix right. Like, oh, yeah. this is an important yeah. part of this history. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'm looking at the Wikipedia page for Shu Takumi, mm-hmm. and I didn't know this. So he is the director, concept, scenario writer, planning for the first three Phoenix Wright games and Ghost Trick, uh, and and Apollo Justice and Ghost Trick. Mm-hmm. And then the next game, 2012, Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. Yeah, imagine that. And then the ga- two games after that, The Great Ace Attorney the Chronicles Ace Adventures Attorney. and yeah. The Greatest Aver- Ace Adventure, but not five and six for Ace Attorney, oh, Phoenix Wright. Oh, that might be interesting. Huh. So that was kind of funny when I saw that name pop up in the credits because I thought that this was kind of like the B tier spinoff maybe. Mm-hmm. So seeing this as his next, you know, yeah. main duology was like, oh, huh, okay. So it's not the writer changed in this case. Hmm. Yeah, I, I plan on getting to two pretty soon, but you know, I'm also playing a different part two of game. Yeah. Part of what ca- kind of kept me motivated to push through this one pretty quickly was that I was going to play Cold Steel 2 afterwards. Cold Steel 2 is a good <laughs> motivator, ain't it? Yeah. And then when I get through this, it's like, oh, and then I'm going to play Greatest Attorney to Chronicles 2. You sound like you're excited about video games again, right? Yeah, dude. It really does. And then uh, Elden Ring comes out soon. See? Like, so it I'm, sounds I'm, like you're getting not, it back. You're getting it back. Not, I realized, you know what really happened? It was like I ran out of anime. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know that that's what happened. <laughs> I ran out of anime that I really wanted to watch and was like, I guess I'll play some extremely long games now. <laughs> Fill in the gap. Let that anime tank build up. 86 hasn't properly air- finished airing yet. Uh, boy, you know, when you when you say things like the last episode doesn't come out till March, it feels so far away. Now we're halfway through February. We're halfway what the fuck? through February. Like Attack on Titan finale is going to be airing sometime this year. Uh, so, okay. <laughs> I have not been spoiled on that, but I have seen speculation from people who know the manga saying there's no way they finish the material in however many episodes. Oh, they're doing a Season two movie. Part, they think I saw a high probability of movie ending. Oh, God. That's extremely oh, funny when they call it I know. final season. Final season part two. <laughs> final season of the movie is oh, fucking dire. Choice. So I'm still kind of I loved Attack on Titan when I was watching it, and then like two years later, I'm like, mm. I don't know. <laughs> I think I probably just need to watch it from the beginning again. Oh no, kinda... that's that's what I planned to do, yeah. and then 2020 happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I watched, uh, I, I caught up last year during the pandemic, mm-hmm. and then I was just like, I'm probably gonna need to watch this whole thing again just to yeah. kind of re like acclimate but i'm only doing that once everything's out i'm not gonna go yeah, in and watch this new season the, the supposed final season week again. to week i'm not doing that i'm just gonna wait till it's all done and then i can just shotgun everything and if it ends with a movie you could be waiting like another year god they have to make the movie then they have to put it in theaters then they have to put it on blu-ray yeah so we could be waiting like a while 2026 Oh my god. Beepner, like, I, he says, like, why is this guy so angry? Look, in Attack on Titan, people have a lot of good reasons to be angry. Like, it's it's a dire situation to be in. I get it, not wanting to watch that. But I think that, like, the situation those characters are in, they kind of 
they need to be angry they need to be having a lot of negative feelings <laughs> oh yeah I, I love the first season when i yeah, watched it the first season is really dope mm-hmm. at the very start aaron is like the angriest anime boy ever yeah yeah he's got <laughs> lots of good reasons to be oh no i know you were probably in large part joking beep there's no biggie so yeah video games video games i'm, I'm cool. glad to hear you back into video games it's the most video games you've been in a while and you don't sound like you're just doing it out of obligation oh, no. only it's... because like you know you sound like you're actually no. enjoying the things that you. i playing. would absolutely not do that because i was like no i'm not going to force it yeah last yeah. year yeah rhett stole video games from me oh that's what happened Right. Well, you, you you stole video games from me, right? I'm not I'm not liking video games right now. Yeah, John can't like video games. Oh, you're not liking anime right now either. That's so a good point. <laughs> we did not swap. <laughs> <laughs> I just took both. Yeah, yeah. He is no. a big void, and he will swallow it whole. Swallow it whole. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready for our break? We are going to take a quickie break, and when we come back. More show! Just for you. Stay tuned. We're everybody. so generous. We are. We're way too generous. We'll be back, people.
Yeah. Yeah. We sound, we sound like strong mad. Strong mad. I ah, don't know. Strong <laughs> It's been too long. Uh, what? How's that? <laughs> What song was that? Hold on, I'll tell you. It was from the Neo Contra soundtrack. It was uh, Nuclear. There. All right. Yeah. How are you doing, Rhett? Good. You doing good. I forgot one of my games. I have to bring it back later. That's okay. I don't. I only have one segment. Yeah. Are you going next? I assume. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yo. Hi. Hi. Give me two seconds. <laughs> okay. Two you seconds. Just had two seconds. This is longer than two seconds. He needed more time. I am actually getting very angry at how this was <laughs> over two seconds. Every second he goes beyond the two seconds he asked for my ass gets more and more pained <laughs> oh my god you guys Far Cry 5 is 80% off on Steam you couldn't give it to me hey, man want to know that time is a lie guess what year Far Cry 5 came out Tw hold uh, on. 2020. No, 2020 okay John do you have a guess I said 2019. 2018. What? Jesus Christ. I thought oh, I was being conservative. I, I know, right? Oh. I'm like, this is a recent game, one or two years old. 2018. Ooh. March 2018. Oh, so almost, God. Almost four years old. What the fuck? How it man. I mean, part of that is I don't pay attention that closely to AAA games anymore. Yeah. But jeez, that one being four years old is like, what? <laughs> and Far Cry is just straight up mediocre garbage at this point. So... Yeah. Who cares? Like, I, don't I, don't like, I don't care if you got Esposito. I don't care. It doesn't change the fact that you made a very boring game around him. It's the same way the Far Cry 3 had a great villain and then you killed him halfway in and didn't know what the fuck to do. It's insane that I still see Voss talked about. Like, right. Like, it was he didn't do anything! But it was like... I was watching some YouTube essay about how like video games don't really have... like villains with strong on-screen presence and that was like just and that Voss was the one they went to because he's like literally the only one that the games have ever had yeah just man and they misused him in that game yeah like they completely like like the, they wanted it to be a big trick like haha -ha, like you thought but then like i wonder if at any point when they saw how much Voss caught on after that initial yeah. reveal if they were like Oh no, we oh. might have just shot ourselves in the ass. Uh, oh, a, now I remember. With a dick yeah. gun. <laughs> the context was how much people liked the giant vampire mommy in Resident, in Evil, Resident 8, Evil 8. Yeah. Who also is not a major part of that game. Unfortunate. <laughs> they didn't like go, oh shit, she's going to be really popular before release. How do you not you know, read the room? How do you not get it? How do you not know that when you make a character like that, that is just so immediately that good, how do you not know that immediately you have to reverse fucking course and say, okay, we need to go back and rewrite and delay this game by a year. Dommy Mommy is now the star of the show. I'm sure that would cost a lot of money. It probably did. It would have been worth it would have been worth going back because I mean the disappointment you're gonna have on the player base realizing that their dommy mommy isn't going to be there isn't going to be the one uh, you know helping separate their world reality and, and helping you know, <laughs> it's not going to be stepping on them not going to be giving them big steppy uh, the, the moment the you other huge that. disappointment with her Resident Evil Seven you can play in VR on PlayStation Resident Evil Eight no VR no. I think the, Could you the, imagine the, her in VR? That would be wild! Imagine making her a main villain that actually does something and then she stomps on you in VR. You've created a moment for so many people out there. Look at, <laughs> think of, you'd be doing God's work for so many people, I think. They realized that they had too much power. <laughs> <sighs> oh, too much. 
Sometimes, sometimes you just gotta pull back, I guess. What can you do? Why aren't we the ones making the video games? I really think it's kind of the question we should be asking. I mean, we are clearly the one, like... <laughs> because working on AAA games sounds like hell. It sound, yeah, that, that's a good point. It sounds absolutely terrible. <laughs> Not a thing I would want to do. And you're like four years old. You're like, man, I want to make video games. That'd be the coolest thing ever. And then we grew up and then we made video games. And we're like, yeah, that was kind of cool. <laughs> And then you go and you see people. Oh, cool. People literally just killing themselves in the AAA industry. Yeah. Nice. Not, I thought nice. I was going to ignore it. I didn't. My thing wasn't going through for some reason. Oh. Hello? I, I, but I've been here. I've been enjoying the Resident Evil talk. Oh, okay. Okay. That's okay. I, I've been facing the same thing, Polly, of just like trying to wonder why people keep having different opinions than mine instead of just having the right opinions. <laughs> right. Like, why don't you just have a good opinion for like, you could try it. Look, just go home, look into your mirror and just say, look, 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 look all you got to do, look in the mirror. I promise you anybody can do this. And you just look in the mirror, like, don't even think, don't put any thought behind this other than the fact that you, what you were about to say is intrinsically right. And you're going to have a good opinion for the first time in your life to say final fantasy nine is bad. <laughs> All you gotta do, it's just that easy. And you will have finally had a good take. And you can take that take and put it on the internet. People will call it a bad one, but you're actually a hero. I was sitting here just like, oh God, I hope I didn't scare away a couple friends from the podcast by being too mean to FF9 and then it came back. Oh dear, <laughs> well. Hi everybody that know. I've hi everybody that I've just alienated from my podcast. No, I'm really fine. good at doing that, by the way. No, 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 Polly. I uh, that one was on. That one was me. <laughs> that that one was very <laughs> much me. I appreciate and enjoy it. Those people parachuted out of this chat an hour ago. <laughs> the moment that they heard that John Thayer's opinion had turned, they were just like, "I'm xing the fuck out of this tab." We're done. This podcast has nothing else to say to me. Is that what they meant by the worm has turned? The worm. (laughs) (sighs) 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 You keep all this in when you do the final version. Yep. (laughs) Absolutely do. Okay. Yeah. 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 I always find a tasteful place to cut back in that is very fun. Cool. All right. So, I'll talk about some stuff now, I guess. I only did a couple oh, yeah. of things. Uh, one of them um, one of them is hard to talk about, so it can't be a long segment, because if I mm. reveal too much about it, I, I, w- I feel like I would be giving too much away. So, I can only oh. really tell you what it is and give you my opinion on it and give you kind of the basic rundown of what it is. Um, about a week or so ago, myself and Sayara, we streamed a game called Behind the Frame which is uh, a narrative-based puzzle game uh, that's focused on art. Um, And you uh, solve little puzzles by painting things. There are other weird puzzles kind of laying around in the environment that you eventually sort of get around to interacting with. And um, it's just this very interesting sort of 90-minute... Um, piece that is uh, incredible in presentation because there's a lot of animation uh, in the game where it's like wow this is pretty Ghibli-esque holy shit uh-huh. um, it's, and, and like the environments that you're in uh, it's very lived in like this apartment that uh, sort of is like the central theme of uh, the game uh, where you're at uh, it's very detailed. There's just it's a very lived-in place, and then uh, there are just many other environments that you kind of end up exploring that just have this painterly look to them. Uh, because again, the, the game is just kind of all about art and the story that it's telling through art. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, this is a game that kind of left us gobsmacked in the end when we saw what it was doing when we when we were mm-hmm. when we were when we were applying the final stroke, if you will. Uh, to the playthrough and we saw what this game was doing you kind of just sat back and just like oh my god this is just absolutely one of the most brilliant little narrative experiences I've ever experienced in this Mm -hmm. format before Um, 
And it's just about this girl who wakes up every morning and starts painting on a picture. She's got a morning routine where you've got to make her breakfast. She's got to type up her resume for an exhibition that she wants to be a part of, um, to need some coffee. And you sort of go through this a few times and you start putting together this narrative of things. And then there's these surrealist portions of it where it starts to feel like a weird like Resident Evil puzzle box where it's just like I'm, <laughs> where it's like okay I start the game out and for some reason I've only got my yellow paint so I can only paint the yellow parts of my picture because I guess I was I was at Walmart and then I forgot holy shit I forgot my corn nuts so I went and I bought my corn nuts and I didn't buy the rest of my paint um but then you do you do ex you do all the puzzles in the game and like oh look I found the blue paint <laughs> so now I can go do the blue now I can go paint blue things, um, but I don't want to spoil how the puzzle mechanics of this game work. They're all very simple. There's nothing hard about it. Mm -hmm. It's just very cleverly done, um, and the artwork is just absolutely astounding. And I like it, it. It's a game that like when it when it was over, not only did like a couple other people dm me afterward and was just like holy shit that was the most profound fucking thing i've seen uh other people were like i'm i, I only saw a bit of it but i'm going and buying it right now it's just like jesus okay which was fun because the game was actually on sale when i streamed it so nice uh but yeah uh behind the frame uh i think it's like 10 bucks um, yeah, and i think that like even though it's like an hour and a half or so it's absolutely worth picking up at that price just the, the the incredible detail in the artwork everything being loved on as much as it is the the interstitial animations that are like all hand-drawn piece you know frame by frame just it is a it is an astonishing piece of work uh that completely caught me off guard because i was just like i just want something to play that's like an hour and a half like i i, I don't want to dive into anything big right now because i just finished another big thing that i'll be talking about momentarily and then ghosty was like well here's this thing you could play i've heard it's only like 90 minutes and she just let me play it and she hadn't even played it yet um <laughs> so like i streamed it and like we had this big moment on stream of just like holy crap this was incredible and then she plays it and she's like yep holy crap that's incredible like everybody that's like contacted me about either having watched the stream or played it themselves has been like yeah holy crap that was really good <laughs> um so yeah behind the frame absolutely give that a look uh i cannot recommend that game enough there's, there's so much cool shit that game's doing that's awesome, Polly. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. You, you gotta love that shit that just catches you completely off guard. And it's just like, well, okay, that's awesome. Absolutely. That's a, that's, a, that's yeah. such a cool feeling. So, I definitely want to check this out at some point. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think you should. Like, I, I know I know both. I, I, I'm pretty sure this would be a very Sox cast approved game. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so, yeah. Behind the frame. Give that a look. I'm pretty, I think there's a demo, too, despite the fact that it's only 90 minutes. So you can like, there is. yeah, yeah, you can play it and kind of get an idea of what it's doing. Um, but yeah, you should play that. It's real good. Uh, other than that, I played a visual novel. Uh, a visual, it's kind of a visual novel puzzle game, actually. A, a weird amount of puzzle games for me. Uh, from uh, you know, for somebody who's obviously very much <laughs> yeah. into uh, puzzle games. Um, <laughs> This is a visual novel puzzle game. I played Will a Wonderful World. Um, Ooh. So this is like a, a title and a half. Yeah, it's interesting. I I the title doesn't make sense until the end, but it's a title. So mm -hmm. um it's a game about uh, you, you, you you it's a girl and it, she wakes up not knowing where or who she is and she meets a talking dog named Will. And the dog, the talking dog named Will informs like, hey, you're actually a god with the ability to alter the fate of humans. Um, so so that's kind of like the, the, the general setup is like, you know, amnesiac girl wakes up and says like, wait a minute, I'm god, what? And, um, <laughs> and, and as a god, she sort of like receives letters, but they're more like, like it's, it's basically sort of a, 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 an analog for prayers basically. Uh, but but mm -hmm. they're sort of like formatted in a way of letters, like the characters will sign them at the end and stuff like that. It's sort of, it's sort of just a way to kind of make something more tangible uh, so that you have something to play around with um, from a gameplay standpoint. Um, 
Uh, but as God, she uh, receives letters uh, from people in dire situations, and her superpower is that she takes bits and pieces of these letters uh, and she moves them around to change the, a character's fate. So, like, a simple one, like, the first simple one that you do is that uh, there's this girl, and she's practicing tennis, and it's, like, a badly maintained tennis court. And the lights are flickering, they're going on and off, and then they finally go out. And so, she like, she's stuck in the dark, but she decides to, like, clean up all of her shit and go home. So, but when she gets home, she finds out that she's lost her keys somehow, probably while Aww. she was cleaning up in the dark. So, she can't get in, and she starts freaking out. It's like, God, if you're there, please help me. Uh, so to fix this, you're given two parts of her letter that you can move around. Uh, the light bulb flickered and went out, and I cleaned up and went home. So obviously to change the story, what you want to do is you move I cleaned up and went home before the light bulb flickered and went out. And then you change the story Aww. where she gets home. And, and they expand on this idea very quickly by... Um, most of the time you will be doing this between two letters of two people so like there will be two very different stories happening but each side will have mm. different bits and pieces that you can move around from one story to the other to make the outcomes change um so and you do that like and there are like multiple endings like i think each letter has anywhere from two to twelve endings per letter uh, mm. that you get but with the ways that you can shuffle around sort of the the bits and bobs um, and there's like S rank endings, which are the best. Um, each letter usually has one or two of those. Then there's like good endings. Uh, and then there's like three to nine trash endings, which I'll spoil for you that you should go ahead and take the time and tediously unlock because it will be important later. Um, mm -hmm. But there, there's almost little to no variety in a lot of the bad endings though. Like a lot of it's just like one or two sentences and then like the bad thing that happens just happens um and there's not a lot of flavor text for it either so it's just kind of like oh you're just and there's no fucking quick text skip option either for Oof. shit that you've <laughs> already read so it's kind of oh that's unfortunate Oof. um so it's just like it's a lot of busy work that you need to do because if you don't you will get stuck later mm -hmm. um uh but th basically for me though like the 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 idea sort of becomes this thing where you stop paying attention to the pieces of the letters you can move around and you just start mm -hmm. arranging them by process of elimination to get all the outcomes because oh that's what the game wants um mm -hmm. like like a lot if you're like me like the the collector's intuition is going to make you want to just oh i want to light up all the lights i want to make all the numbers go up i want to get the s on everything um so 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 like but the pieces are so like weirdly translated and presented sometimes that I actually couldn't logically follow what the pieces related were tr saying and how they related to the outcomes that I got. So I kind of just felt like that part of the game starts really falling apart when mm. things, like, they don't make a lot of sense and you're just kind of like, I'm just pushing things here because these are the options that I have and these are the only ones that I haven't ticked off yet. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. um... So when you get near the end of the game, they put you on a 90 minute timer to fix everything. And this is <laughs> sort of where doing all the tedious unlocking comes into play because now you can change the ending to any letter. At, like, at, your, at your will, you can go up to just like press Y on any letter and be like, okay, which of these 12 endings do I want to set this letter at to see if it affects uh -huh. anything below it? And you get like a hundred or so letters over the course of the game and they all have anywhere from two to 12 switches that you can select. And the ending is predicated on you finishing all of the letters. So you need to find ways to like unlock every single letter that you possibly can using all of these weird combinations. And the game's kind of really bad at communicating exactly what it wants. Um, so you, 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 you're on this timer that I'm pretty sure is just like, it's a bad ending game over. So if you save during it, you're fucked. Um, mm. and, and you get to do the whole game again. I'm sure that's what happens. Cause I don't know what else they do. Um, cause I like, I finished it with like 20 minutes left 
and like mm. and and it doesn't stop when you're like trying to read new letters either like so like like when you go back and like you you because you're still getting new letters you have to fix uh, in this prog in this process along with going back and putting other letters to specific endings so that these characters get where they need to go um so when you're getting these new letters and you're like, if you're not a super fast reader, I feel like that kind of sucks for you uh, uh, because nothing's voice acted. Like there's no speed up text button. It's uh -huh. just, oh boy. Like I can see how this could be a real problem for somebody who doesn't read super fast. Like you just fucked. <laughs> uh. um, and yeah, like that's kind of like how the climax of the game plays out is they give you 90 minutes to fix the rest of everything before they throw you into sort of like this epilogue that explains exactly what's going on that I didn't particularly feel any kind of connection to at all. It was just kind of, uh -huh. eh. Um, the story suffers a lot uh, from the writing, honestly. Uh, it's very dry to sort of facilitate the game part, I feel, because all the writing has to be like, I did this, and then this happened, and then this happened, so I did this. And they, it all needs to be able to facilitate you moving the letter pieces around because mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're, they're actions. They're things that mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. So it all has to be written with this very dry, like not very literary, literarily exciting, uh, I don't know if that's a word, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's not an exciting read. Um, literaristically. Yeah. Literaturistically. Oh my God. Uh, um, uh, I, I, the characters just never really spoke to me either because there's mm -hmm. just there's not a lot of character voice in the writing uh, is the problem, um, and there are situations like they range from intensely uninteresting to flat out absurd that it was hard for me to take much of it seriously at all. Like. Mm -hmm. In one of the dudes, in one of the characters' good endings, his ending is he flushes himself down a toilet. It's like, well, but then there's the ending where this girl is, uh, she she's kidnapped and she's sold into being a sex slave. She escapes and two years later, she's the world's greatest assassin. What? Okay. And then there's the cop who turns into a demon, like. All of these stories are trying to do so many things at once that it's just bad at all of them. Honestly, this kind of reminds me of the when I when I played Banshee's Last Cry ages ago. Uh -huh. um, it has like three hours of like murder mystery, and then then it like opens up a lot of choices, and then but then all the other paths are just like shit post joke endings. Oh, and they resolve very quickly, and they're similarly very silly. And that kind of, and it's pretty deflating. Oh, uh, yeah, like, like, yeah, like this is a game where it's just like I was like at reading it at every stop. It was like these characters are so fucking boneheaded. Like they're so stupid. They they make they constantly just make the worst possible decisions at mm -hmm. every point, and it's just like I'm begging for somebody to have a little bit of competence, but they're all written as just complete idiots. Um, and, and the writing is just bone dry. So it's just like, it, mm -hmm. I just came away from it. Like the whole thing incredibly turned off. Mm -hmm. Like the only thing I really liked was that like, it's clearly a visual novel that was created on a budget. And, mm -hmm. I, and I liked that their, um, their, 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 their solution to that was to do something interesting with the presentation. So like, when you're going through the narrative bits and reading a character's story and what's going on, it's just like this cute, like ornate background with the character's silhouette over it. And they, um, and when they can, there's like really good CGs kind of splattered out, you know, since they didn't have the money to like do character sprites or do dialogue or do voice acting or anything. Like, so it's got, it's got a nice sleek look to it that works really well with like the gameplay bits. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the music's really good. I like the I like the OST a lot, but everything about this is just like I was just dragging myself across the finish line to be done with it. Um, mm -hmm. it was just kind of like I, yeah, that was kind of a yeah, it was a bit of a miss, unfortunately. You hate it when a visual novel goes it, bad. It seems a little, it seems a little like like bad ghost trick a little bit with the yeah. way that the puzzles are playing out for you. Yeah, yeah, like the puzzles, like there's really nothing puzzly about it. Because, like, like I said, mm -hmm. by the end of it, I was just like, okay, 
I know, like, I haven't tried this and this yet. All right, this, this, and this. All right, move all the pieces over to the left, move all the pieces over to the right, move this piece to the left, move this piece to the right, move this piece to the left, this piece to the left, and this piece to the right. <laughs> that's all I was doing by the end is just, like, hit all the options because that's all you got to do. Uh, and, then, and then, like, the stories had become so uninteresting or boring or stupid by that point that is, I did not care. Um, so when the game plays its final, you know, like... What it, what's actually happening uh, with this girl and the talking dog and how all of this ties together? It's just like, I, whatever. Like this was all just like <laughs> I said. I said like bad ghost trick, and I forgot about the talking dog. Yeah, the talking dog. Oh wow, actually yeah. kind of <laughs> actually ties the whole thing together in a really weird and funny way. Now that you mention it. Uh, but yeah, will a wonderful world just not? Did not do much for mm-hmm. me. Uh, and I had some laugh out loud moments just because like the things that were happening were stupid. I posted a lot of them on Twitter because it was like, yeah. there's a character like that gets in a bad situation because he's got a fart. Like that was, it's like that and the character that flushed himself down the toilet. I'm like, there you go. You did it. You got a good fart joke. Um, and you got somebody that flushed himself down a toilet. He's a cop, so cops deserve to be flushed down toilets anyway. So sure. it was pretty good. Like, like that's a good end for a, a good end for a cop. <laughs> the cop flushes himself down the toilet. Good end. But I mean, that, that, it wasn't the cop that flushed. The cop was the one that had to fart. The cop was oh. the one that had to fart. And if he farted, I think he got killed. So he had to hold in his fart. And he had to move. <laughs> I, I don't know. This sounds all right to me. <laughs> I mean, it's that one letter, one letter in one story yeah. out of, like, the 110 that you have to do. That's way too many, it sounds like, yeah. And just, I I didn't feel this game went anywhere that was interesting at all. It was just like, mm. and, and, and like, when you boot it up, it's just like, you want to want to play this with earphones on, and you're going to want to have tissues, too, because this game's so sad and depressing, and I'm just like... <laughs> Dog, I was just laughing most of the time. <laughs> There's two games that ask you to bring tissues, and I'm not sure which one you were going to say immediately. <laughs> <laughs> this is not Koikatsu Party. Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Just like, it's it's very proud of itself for being edgy, I guess. I, I will give a content warning. If you do decide to play this game, and I, mm-hmm. I don't know why you would, but anyone's interested and you still want to do it, uh, there is a very detailed child rape um, in this oh, game. Oh boy! Um, oh boy! It, uh, well, it's censored in the Switch version, uh, but on the Steam version, like the image is there. Um, what the fuck? And like they they very much describe what is happening to the child. Like I looked it up because I was like that seemed weirdly edited on this. Like, it didn't read right. It looked like the, the picture they showed during what was happening was like, what's going on here? So I looked up a Let's Play. I was like, oh, God. Uh, pretty rough. Uh, holy shit. <sighs> yeah, like, I'd not, I'd not a lot seen... Of, lot of, lot, a lot to write... <laughs> It seems like this is doing a lot, huh? Yeah, like that was like, like I'd never seen something like that in a video game, and I, I don't really want to again. Glad the Switch version edited it out, but like when I saw what was going on, and it like you left that picture in there on the woke, and the and the child very clearly mentions being twelve years old, so you're not hiding anything here. Um. Yeah, so if you go in and you want to play this game, know that there is a very explicit scene where a child is raped. Um, that's a that's a not thing. great. No, not, not good. fantastic. Not at all. It's opposite of fantastic. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's well, it's yeah, just uh, just an overall. I think it's just it, it's some, entirely some... uninteresting and. Sometimes the visual novel is a miss. Yeah, yeah, it's that can sad. be a miss. This was a pretty big miss uh, for me. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Don't play that. Super one. fun when they're both when they're kind of bad and boring and also really gross. Yeah, yeah. You got the really That's gross a... and like it wasn't trying to glorify it. I don't think. I think they just wanted to write that and have an edgy story. It wasn't glorifying mm-hmm. it. It wasn't making it like this thing that you should be titillated by. Um, 
You know, I, I get, like, I, I'm pretty sure that the intent was like, oh, we're going to be as real and gritty as possible. And it's just like, well, why did you do that when this is also the game about a cop that needs to fart and, and, and a guy that flushed himself down the toilet in his good ending? Why didn't you just, like, let the kid flush himself down the toilet? That would probably have been a better idea. <sighs> I didn't write it, though. I don't get to make these decisions. If my decision, more visual novels would probably have farts in them. Can you imagine? I wrote two visual novels, and there's not a single fart in either of them. Oh my god, there really isn't. No, you, I could have probably snuck one in there because they had cell phones, and it'd be like, "Haha, cute cell phone jingle," right? Like, oh, you I need that remastered edition with that echo fart sound effect. And the one everybody's using now. Yeah. That I. I let okay. The, uh, I'm gonna. I don't. This is not gonna make sense to anybody. But uh, there is a streamer named Phenomenon, and he lets you have an mm -hmm. intro command if you have enough channel points. And I redeemed it. And my intro command was I made a big like mine is just exclamation more poly, and um, it, it's just a big fart with reverb on it. And I I <laughs> made I had I made that three years ago, and now everybody's using the same fart sound with reverb on it weird <laughs> so when i like when i when i went into somebody's chat and I, I saw the fart button i pressed it i was like that sounds like the fucking one i made for phenomenon stream <laughs> what the fuck the the, the tastemaker poly tastemaker we're, we're the tastemakers here at the socks community that, yeah beepner's right my new hashtag should just be poly fart <laughs> Don't play Will a Wonderful World. I don't think that it's that wonderful. Aww. You 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 are not willing us to play it. No, no. Nah, nah, I am willing you. I am willing you to play behind the frame though. Uh, that game is incredible. Loved it to pieces. That is a game. It's so that pretty. When I finished it, I was thinking about it the next day. I was just like, man, that's such. That's so cool. I hope I write something cool and smart. That, that like that someday that's such a good feeling <laughs> yeah 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 play that play yeah. behind the frame if you take anything well, away from you. me this episode play behind the frame well thank you for the nuanced thought it's nice hearing about the big holy shit this was so good and then it's also nice hearing about the kind of muddled misses yeah. as well since you're yeah. always going to get some of those finding the mm. looking for the next big awesome ones I, I, I started Umi Neko as well. I finished uh, the first uh, episode. Uh, I had a man, that first episode goes, huh? Yep. It's so good. <laughs> I, I, I watched the I watched the first two episodes. It was I played the first two episodes and it was it's still extremely good. Yeah, like I, I'm gonna probably Very start to play more. I'm probably gonna start episode two this week. I'm feeling it again. I played that first good. one. It was like, oh man. Like I was just immediately pulled back in as soon as that music started. Like on the and they're on the you know you're on the boat. Mm -hmm. Battler's gonna fall. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my god! And just like the way that that whole climax happens and how cool, yeah. Natsu, how awesome Natsu he is. Oh my god, Natsu! Natsu fucking rules. She's my favorite. She's the best she's, mom. She's a very good mom. <laughs> well, well, okay. <laughs> Umineko is a best mom competition for yeah, sure. Yeah, Umineko is definitely like like we definitely, Umineko is the best worst mom. Competition. I think like when, as we work our way through Umineko, I think that's a conversation that we need to kind of keep uh, keep circling going, back to. Is going back to is like okay, where are we at on best mom? Me me me. Where are we at on worst mom? Yeah yeah, I think we need to <laughs> same <definitely>. same thing. <laughs> where are we at with mom? I want to step on me. Oh, Natsuki, <laughs> clearly, right now. Anyway. What? Right Chewy. now, right now, right now, right now. I would have thought, I would have thought, um, oh, fuck. I love George's Ava. Mom. I love Ava. I want to I marry I Ava. Ava. I want to marry Ava and have the best sex of my life. <laughs> fuck, Mary kill the uh, moms. Fuck, Mary kill. Um, <laughs> fuck Natsuki. Uh, wow. Mar uh, marry, um, uh, marrying Ava, because that's going to be like the best sex in the world anyway. Uh, kill, kill Rosa. <laughs> Absolutely kill Rosa. That's where my brain went to. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, and then we adopt Maria. Because, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Like now so, you're married. The, me and Ava. Uh -oh. Me and Ava are married and we adopt Maria. Perfect. All right. <laughs>
What about you, you, Where are you at? Where are you at? Box. Uh, fuck Mary Kill. Let's uh, go. Oh God. Hmm. Fuck Ava. Okay. Mary Kyrie. Oh, good choice. Uh, kill Rosa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's exactly mine. Yeah. Oh, we have a good podcast, I swear. Yeah. It's real good. <laughs> this is the stuff people tune in for right here. <laughs> Life is good. Ha! Ah, John! That's me. That Are is, you all ready? That is definitely you. I'm maybe ready. Okay. Um, so fuck video games. They're stupid. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, I'm reading the Ancillary Justice trilogy. I'm going to hold off on talking much more about that until I finish the finish the books. But they're they're treating me really right so far. Okay. The first book was really good. I'm on the second one now. I'm getting them at the library. Did you know they have those? Wait, library? Yeah, what's a yeah. library? They have. It's those? like I have a library like a block from me, and if any of the libraries in Chicago have a book I want, I can tell them on the website to take it to the library a block from me and then I can pick it up. Oh, that's wild. I see like I knew yeah. I knew libraries still existed because the laws is always using the library to get things. Uh, on account of working at one. On yes. account of working at one. <laughs> so she's always just like, yo, I just got all this anime stuff from my fucking library. Ain't it wild? <laughs> it's extremely good. Um so yeah, these books are treating me really well. The first one is the the premise is just like the the main character so it's a sci-fi future world um where humanity is spread out across a bunch of planets and is a large kind of oppressive empire mm -hmm. um but it's very nuanced with the culture of that oppressive empire um like there's a bunch of like it allows the empire to be like have good parts and have bad parts and i think that's pretty interesting mm. um also a fun thing is that it at this point in the future it these are pretty recent books um at this point in the future there's no sense of gender so everyone is referred to as she which i really oh, like Oh, nice um but the main character is a ship ai so these big battleships have these ais that control everything and ever and can kind of watch over everyone mm -hmm. and they the the empire will whenever they conquer a new planet will just take like a number of adults from the planet and then turn them into ancillaries, which basically like step putting an implant in their head that turns them into part of the ship's AI. And the original person dies and they become just a zombie extension of the ship. Mm. So you read a lot of chunks of the book from the ship's perspective as she controls like a bunch of an like hundreds of ancillaries. Um, and then you read a future chunk where for some reason she's ju now just one person completely disconnected from any ship and you don't really know what is going on there mm. so the two stories kind of progress this is like the the, the f one is far in the future so these progress in turn until finally you figure mm. out you find out what happened and then it progresses and climaxes with the future story right uh, it's very cool it's a very cool premise um it reminds me a lot of nine fox gambit which came out the same year and nine fox gambit was hugo award nominated the year that this won the hugo oh okay <laughs> and it's and it's pretty funny that they have a lot of similar textures um, when 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 that was the case. And I and I just happened to read Nine Fox Gambit a lot earlier, so I'm having a blast. I'm excited to read the rest of the book, uh, the books. I've just been watching a shit ton of movies. Movies are good. I like those. Yeah, I I've gone months with the pandemic. I went like eight months without watching a movie. I've gone years. Oh, that that's that's comforting because it is so easy to just not. I watch. I tend to watch movies socially, so during the pandemic, it was just so easy to not watch movies at all. Right. Um, getting yourself to watch a movie when you're alone is very hard for some reason for me. Um, like a game or even a book tends to work a lot easier. I think because it's like, um you're active like when you're playing a game on a controller or moving yeah. pages in a book there's a little more you're not just sitting there although even then um i feel like tv shows because they're a little more bite-sized episodes while also being way more long form you're not just jumping into a new experience every time it's more like right, i'm gonna watch an episode yeah. of the thing i'm already familiar with you can just kind of 
watch an episode each mm-hmm. night and feel or watch six episodes and be and yeah. it feels pretty easy and compulsive for me um, movies for me movies is always like oh if this is two hours long then it's going to be two hours later if i don't stop if i have the attention span to even not pause once during the entire thing it yep. does feel like a little bit more of a commitment than tv show mm-hmm. even though in practice it's not because it'll be over in two hours whereas a tv show will be usually at least like four yeah um but then that's the thing is that when you watch a movie it's just like 90 minutes or two hours and you have experienced a complete artistic vision (laughs) a lot of the time and that's so that's very cool and you don't get that playing a lot of art playing long rpgs or visual novels or reading long novels yeah not at all it's just like i i am dying from playing final fantasy 9 and then i'm watching movies (laughs) and i'm just like a shotgun blast to the face of story and it's so nice it's just really refreshing it's it's exactly the mood i needed yeah with just like psychic high saying movies greater than tv shows and like yeah yeah Um, i mean again they are technically tv shows but this is the same feeling i got when i went on the huge anime binge of like hey this is just immediately more story than video games can yeah like yeah, like a 13 episode anime is still very dense compared yeah. to like our 50 hour RPGs. A 50 hour RPG that is two games long. Yeah, and a lot of people watch movies all the time and don't play RPGs. And I have like reverse engineered myself into. <laughs> have you heard about movies? <laughs> <laughs> it's just 22 hours and then the, you've experienced a story. Isn't that why? You can just be done. And you're done. I mean, also, it's a Marvel movie, in which case it's like part of a 30 movie uh, <laughs> Gigando Empire. Um, and and uh, then people, they can rewatch movies because they aren't so fucking long. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. It's very nice to rewatch a good movie. Um, so I'm just going to I'm just going to fire off through some of these. I watched American Psycho. Yeah. If I watched this movie when I was 17, this would have been my personality for at oh, least no. two years. <laughs> like two yeah, years. Yeah. Completely, as, that's it. That's that's the John experience. When I discovered this, this, uh, this book at, uh, as a youngin, yeah, like I was, <laughs> this was me. Uh, we were very excited when this movie adaptation was, was, was announced just beyond over the moon and ecstatic to see it come to life and i think the the the, the movie does a much better job with the material uh than the, than the book because i think the book just gets way too up its own ass and long-winded by the end gotcha i really like this movie <laughs> it's real good that's that's cool hearing your experience of the book and kind of comparing them mm-hmm. um so it's just I mean, I feel it's such a big thing in pop culture because it, there are like a lot of American Psycho memes, which is pretty funny. That, that and, is my, entirely my exposure to this movie is only knowing the memes. And like the memes <laughs> yeah. are extremely funny is the thing. Yeah, they're really good. Like I kept this watching, is a black uh, comedy. Uh, okay. It's American so Psycho. Funny. Yeah, American Psycho. It's not a horror movie. It's a black comedy. Mm hmm. And it is deeply, deeply funny. Yeah. Um, I watched the credit card scene, not the credit card, the business card <laughs> the business scene. Business card scene. And yeah. like, I was like, I need to watch this movie at some point. And that was like a year ago. Um, it is. <laughs> that's just, it's just got such a good sense of humor the whole time. Yeah. Um, the bit of just like obviously like reciting a memorized a memorized music review of the phil collins discography (laughs) as he's about to murder somebody yeah it's so good um he he murders somebody like 10 15 minutes in like there's no it's not like a slow build-up no it's like the whole yeah he's like just walking home and stabs up a a homeless dude (laughs) right after the Right after the coworker has a nicer business card, yeah, than he just does. like, oh, we gotta take this out on somebody. <laughs> um, and there is like scary tension to a lot of it, like it, it balance that, which makes the humor land even better. Yeah, it's just like yeah. keeping you emotionally invested very well. Like it's so cool. Chasing people around with a fucking chainsaw, <laughs> it's just the so fucking good. best. 
<laughs> just like stepping into another movie for a second. It really <laughs> is. It's it's... Batty, and then it's just back to it. And you're like, oh, OK. OK. <laughs> it's so. And then the ending just like completely denies you like any kind of tidy. Oh, it's resolution. So the ending is just so delicious. The way that it just like it rolls out second to second. And it's just like that final monologue. It just really drills it in. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, this movie fucking rules. Rhett, you so need to watch. Funny. You need to watch this movie, Rhett. <laughs> I, I I was playing Doom earlier today, and I like I was in like a really like a, a bunch of monsters came out, and I ran out the door, and I said, "I'm leaving. I've assessed the situation, and I'm going." <laughs> I also recommend uh, Ice Nine Kills' uh, song Hip to be Scared. Uh, and, and the accompanying music video, which is a very goddamn good parody of uh, of the American Psycho movie. Like, they even parody, like, him dancing around the apartment, getting ready to kill the dude, and reciting an Ice Nine Kills review. Um, good. Instead of Huey Lewis. And it's really, really good. <laughs> Uh, Buechner pointed out the Hannibal books versus the movies. I watched all of the Hannibal movies as a kid and read all of the Hannibal books. Wow, look at you go. Oh, that was my weird serial killer media fandom because I didn't know about this one. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, yeah. I, it, it, I really cannot overstate just how much this would have consumed me. Yeah, like school, I was there. Even now it's still completely my head. I was there. I was there. That was the moment Fantastic. for me. It's just like, yep, this is my chuny shit right here. Exactly. <laughs> Projecting onto serial killer psychopaths oh just God. the exact same way that people project. I was that fucking theory, edgy though. teenager literally buying, yep. literally buying books about serial killers and reading them thinking that I was the coolest shit for spouting something off about a random serial killer from the 1800s in casual <laughs> conversation. I was that fucking person. <laughs> it's so funny because this is a very relatable experience because I had this moment watching this like, oh my god, this was I was such a I was a chuny fucker in high right? school about this stuff. <laughs> and then I talked to my brother and he was like, Yeah, I thought I was maybe a psychopath in high school. And I was like, All right, yeah. This is all of us. <laughs> There's a, there's a there's a sense of like well if I'm like Patrick Bateman then it, I'm interesting yeah <laughs> but then you're then no you're just a normal person yeah go watch this, too, go watch this movie Rhett please it's really fucking fun uh, <laughs> it's really good I promise you <laughs> um I really liked Ebert's review he kind of talked about he compared it with the book too and pointed out that the the director's a lady and yeah. I think that. There's something notable at that, about that with how it handles the misogyny. depicting a lot of the violence yeah. and misogyny. Yeah. Um, the sex scenes are overtly very funny. Yes. With <laughs> the bits, the bits where he's fucking two people <laughs> and, and like, then just looking at himself in, in the, the mirror, mirror and flexing. flexing. <laughs> yes, I look so good fucking these people. It's so much. <laughs> Oh god! There's a, there's a restraint to how a lot of the violence is done. Ver yeah. and apparently the book is very oh, explicit. Oh god! The the book it does not spare any detail, but with the way it's done oh. in the movie, it's it's very cool because it actually sort of like helps make that what's happening in the ending more feasible. Like and just like mm -hmm. where you're kind of bouncing back and forth of like, well, huh? And and, mm -hmm. and I think that that's what makes the movie more effective. Yeah, I agree. And and just also makes him a little bit he's just a little bit more the butt of the joke, I think, for yeah, how they he's how they handle it. Like he's kind he's of really just pathetic. he's kind of just fucking pathetic. Mm -hmm. God, he's so good. Yeah. So that was one movie. I watched like seven movies. Uh oh. I rewatched The Exorcist. Uh-huh. That's good. I watched I watched this on Teleparty with a Seal. It was very nice. Nice. Um that movie's fucking choice as hell. Mm -hmm. Um it's still when I watched this as a kid, I remember it being like the scariest thing I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, so when I rewatched now and it just kind of rolled off my back, I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm basically invincible. Uh -oh. um, 
I can't even be scared by movies at all now. No. Um, I found out that the one, it's very funny. A lot of the bits I specifically remembered from the original movie were part of like some director's cut because they weren't in this one. Oh, oh, interesting. And it's weird because I rewatched the, the specific added effects that they added in the director's cut that's mm-hmm. terrified me as a kid and they look really goofy. I think the original theatrical release is probably a much stronger version. Cool. There, there's like a moment where she's alone. She's like in the dark in her downstairs. And like in the director's cut, they add a little image of the devil appearing over her shoulder. <laughs> and I remember as a kid thinking that was the scariest thing I'd ever seen. And then I watched it and it's like a JPEG. of Yeah, it's of really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad. And that's just not in the original at all. The theatrical version's fucking great. Yep. Um, it's it's very like moving. They they do a great job like getting you invested in like the preacher before they before everything goes to hell. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked it a lot. Um, so I'm like, oh look at me! I'm invincible to scary movies. I'm gonna watch the Blair Witch Project for the first time alone in my apartment in the dark. Surely the goofiest fucking movie. Oh, oh boy, it's good. We're gonna take cameras out into the into the forest and play around. It's just going to be a goofy little found footage movie. It's going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. I, I'm going to be fine. Absolutely. That movie's really scary. I, I went into that movie years ago. I remember I remember laughing at the very idea. A friend of mine had rented it, and I was like, are you serious? Like, that, this, <laughs> did, you buy, did you rent this for us to just laugh at? And he was like, yeah, kind of. And then, <laughs> so, like... Me, he, me, him, his girlfriend are like, and and watching it, and like, literally, like, by the end, we're all just like, what? That was really fucking unsettling. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I, 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 I coped by having lights on and pausing <laughs> to tweet. There's thirty and minutes left. Helped. Just thirty minutes, John. Just thirty minutes left. It, it got. so so bad by like a half hour into the movie and i was like there's still 50 minutes of movie left how can it get worse than this it's already so bad and then it does get very bad gets real bad um there's like no monster there's no on-screen violence this is kind of a spoiler yeah there's like a little tiny bit of blood and gore. Yeah. And it is some of the most affecting blood and gore I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> because it's not a movie that spends its time wallowing in it. Nope. And when it happens, it's, oh, God. Um, yeah, that movie fucked me up. <laughs> yeah, it's real good. It, like, it, it, like, it caught an entire room of people who went in looking to laugh at how stupid the idea was to just being like, mm-hmm. I'm just going to like, like, y'all just want to like stay here tonight and just hang? Like, I could just like call my parents and say I'm staying here. Like, let's just chill. Uh-huh. <laughs> let's just be around all, each other all, right now. Let's all sleep, sleep in the same room with the lights off. Yeah. <laughs> With lights on. <laughs> That's kind of um, like what that night ended up being. And it just completely caught me off guard. It's one of the most affecting movies I've ever seen. That's so funny. Um, that's excellent. Yeah. It's, it's, um, and it's not just like scary vibes, like all the very nonchalant, um, little interviews they do in the town at the front <laughs> of the movie wind up being very good foreshadowing. Yeah. And then like, there's like one image that kind of, makes everything puts everything together and you kind of realize what's happening Mm -hmm. and it's extremely gut-wrenching and horrifying yeah and then the second they have that image the movie immediately ends (laughs) it's so good you have no room to process no energy no anything it's just it's awful yeah it's just awful um Oh my god! Uh, Anatomy is one of my favorite horror games, and yeah. I, I realized watching this, like, okay, yeah, there's some inspired. inspiration there. Yep, very inspired. Oh man, which which is good. Anatomy fucking rules. This was um, had a lot of kind of same, some good, some of the lot of some of the same energy, but Blair Witch is just like very relentlessly grounded and kind of non abstract with yeah. how it handles things. That just makes it so immediate and affecting. Mm. God in heaven. Um, 
a couple other movies. I I really like Baby Driver by Edgar Wright. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not, Ed, Edgar Wright rules all the time. Um, yeah. And I, I feel like he did a good job of like, it still felt like an Edgar Wright movie, like moments where the editing of gunshots is set to the music. Yeah. Is like so Edgar Wright. Um, but, but it, with, without, but also not feeling like every other, with like other Edgar Wright movies. Like it, yeah. it had a very own distinct vibe. I really liked it. Um, I watched Malignant by James Wan. That's what I and... want to see. I, that's on my to want to see list. Yeah, Polly, you should see this. Everybody should see Malignant. <laughs> I've heard nothing but just rave reviews for Malignant. It's so wild. <laughs> That's awesome. The the place. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I watched The Conjuring last month, and I was like, James Wan movies aren't super scary. Like I rewatched Saw recently too. Mm-hmm. The movies aren't that scary because they're so loud and in your face and goofy. Um, and it's it's almost like the opposite of Blair Witch Project or even The Exorcist, where like Wan is like in complete control of what he's doing and what he's wanting to do is make like really elevated B movies. Yeah. Um, are you also there? I think I just yeah, got cut here, out. Yeah. There we go. Good. Ah, I'm sorry. I heard you. I heard. Me. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah. And I said that about the conjuring, which is like an exorcist riff. Yeah. Malignant is like, like nothing else I've ever seen. <laughs> the nature, uh, it's it is it is trading in like horror horror stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of that is like the the vibe you can I can tell people is like oh it's kind of a horror movie but it's so much more. <laughs> it's it's like the the exact opposite approach of a Blair Witch Project in just like making something. Ex- G- James Wan just wants you to have fun. Yeah. And his movies are extremely fun, and Malignant is maybe the most fun. It's certainly the most fun he's had, I think. It seems like there's there's just movies that are so there's just moments in that that are so powerful. There's um and and also I had multiple uh so I had Rob, my my longtime family friend, tell me, all right, John, you should watch this because you liked the last 20 minutes of Insidious. And he did not, <laughs> but he wound up being really moved by *Malignant*. And then my brother Joe texted us, "I just saw *Malignant*, and that was the worst movie I've ever seen." <laughs> Divisive. <laughs> um, because because that's that's the other thing is that *Malignant* is deeply stupid, deeply uh, see, stupid. Now, see now you're speaking my language. I don't like horror, but I do like stupid. Oh no no no! This is not that scary, and it is so transcendentally stupid <laughs> okay uh, Ka- Ka- beepner says um insidious has the goofiest ending and i'm like yeah it's the best part of insidious and insidious rules <laughs> insidious has a fucking great ending um malignant is just like similar going a thousand miles an hour but it's for most of the movie instead of right near the end that's mm. cool um um, but yeah, I, fu- I fucking loved it. Um, and I, and I got a friend to watch it who I knew would love it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, I've been meaning to see that. Thanks for reminding me. And then he watched it and he was like, that was the best movie. Ever- that was one of the best <laughs> movies I've ever seen. Nice. So hard recommend. Awesome. Um, the only one left I watched, I, fu- I watched fucking mega mind. I fucking loved it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just had like, I just, I watched despicable me in 2010. So I missed the, I missed that super villain that yeah murky movie oeuvre but i i had a, i had a blast with that nice. i kept seeing it referenced in like youtube essays and i was like what what is this movie I, mm. I need to go fucking see this so oh and i watched perfect blue today with cecile yeah that's, that's baby. Eight, five, six, seven movies movies perfect blue is my god that was that, that movie was transformative for me uh 80 minutes it. It was like like my first my first hit of Satoshi Kon, um, and like I'd already God, been I'd already been collecting like anime and stuff at that point, like on VHS, kind of already cultivating my own collection and stuff, and like mm. 
you know, it was just like stuff like Tenchi Muyo, Slayers, uh, Those Who Haunt Elves, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just the kind of stuff you could get, like that's kind of like serialized and adventury. And like, like I obviously liked Ghost in the Shell. Um, I obviously liked like Ninja Scroll, but like Perfect Blue was just this entirely different kind of thing that I'd not seen done with the medium, and it just blew my fucking mind. And just like obviously, mm-hmm. like, like no secret, that Satoshi Kon is my favorite uh, anime director. Uh, and it, it's because that movie just like did so much for like what I want to see in stories. Just Jesus Christ! Uh, it, absolutely, it's just like all the meta movie stuff, like the unreality stuff. Oh God, it's so um, good! Com- combined with all the idol culture stuff and gender yep. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> It's so unnerving and weird in the best possible ways. Yeah, it's it's just like this awful cocktail of miserable tension, but yep. like keeping you just enraptured the whole time. Yeah. And again, 80 minutes. 80 straight this minutes and, of it. This and Blair Witch are 80 minutes long, and they and they fit in like that potent of a yeah. story. Like movies do not need to be like the four to seven hours they want to be these days to be super fucking <laughs> yeah. potent. You go like like Blair Witch and Perfect Blue are two perfect examples of movies that are telling an incredible story with just 80 minutes of your time. Yeah, n- none of these have been uh, over two hours. The ones I've been watching, I've specifically been sorting by. Yeah, I, uh, I have that letterbox oh, from sorting I, I by runtime. Yeah, like that's a great move. It's like, oh shit, I can just do this. I'm probably watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre next. Ah, good, 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 good. I've seen some gifts from that one on certain <laughs> right. communities. Yeah. Um, it seems very good. Um but yeah, I, I I love I love movies and obviously a theme here. I fucking love horror movies. Um should probably the- watch Pet Cemetery, John Thyre. Um, I read Pet Cemetery. I I know I've seen Pet Cemetery. Yeah. I um I read the book first, and that's I think that's my favorite Stephen King book, and I've read like 10 of his. It's a very good book, John Dyer. It's a very, it's a very, very good book. You'll really like it. I suggest you watch the movie. It's very good. Okay, maybe, I'll, maybe I can revisit that one. I've never seen Carrie somehow. I Carrie's love really fucking fun. Yep, yep. I. There are so many movies. There's God, so many. Frank Roger it's... Rabbit, that's another great movie. Fucking that's shit. That's on dude. my letterbox. That's such a good movie. <laughs> I've, I'm looking. I just look, I have my letterbox open, just like looking at all these experiences. I'm excited about like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I've never seen Who Framed Roger oh Rabbit. Oh my god, Rabbit. it's so incredible! Like I remember mm-hmm. that movie being a big fucking thing when I was growing up and seeing that, like for the first time as a kid. Like these this interaction between movie and 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 cartoons and the way that all of that's played and like the weirdly dark story that's being told there yeah. it's just like <laughs> what is happening you don't want to get caught in the I, dip my man i was definitely too young when that came out because i liked the first few minutes when it's just the actual cartoon yeah yeah <laughs> then, then it gets real I, rough and then i was and then six-year-old or however old me was completely lost for the entire rest of the movie. Oh, uh, yeah, that is a great fucking movie. It holds up. I need up. to rewatch uh, that for it sure. absolutely holds up. Cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I could I could go all day. I didn't have a list of ones yeah. I haven't seen in a decade plus that mm. I really want to revisit. Mm. revisit. Like, I, I haven't seen Psycho in forever. Oh, I haven't seen God. Jaws in forever. Oh, you mm. saw the American version. I saw the American <laughs> version. Um. <sighs> It's just I love I love I, I was like kind of a bu- movie buff, aspiring movie buff in high school. Like mm-hmm. I watched a ton of old classics. That was me, and I just kind of like like I fell off of it. It's I think it was anime, honestly, that did it mm-hmm. to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, like anime really like like because I like and I still go on those binges where every once in a while it's just like I just want to sit around and watch movies. Like I've done it lots of times. I just never used to talk about them on the podcast because it just doesn't Aww. seem like this is the venue for it sometimes. So, we can do it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like I mean, I mentioned like that Scorsese binge that I went on a couple of uh, yeah. Years I, I want to go on one of those. Um, that I've never seen Taxi time. Driver. I've never oh. seen Raging Bull. Oh my god, they're so good. I have the Last Temptation of Christ is like a three hour one, so yeah. I, I'm I'm holding off well, on that one for like, a bit. Yeah, it, you need time for that. But one. I I really want to see that one at some point. Yeah, I have like three anime movies on here, and I realized earlier today that they are all Naoko Yamada. Oh, okay. <laughs> all Theo Annie. I I wanted to watch a Silent Voice. I wanted to watch Liz and the Bluebird. Yeah. Um, Tamako Love Story, and I realized these are all the same director, which is very funny. Huh. 
I just had independently added them, not knowing that they were part not of the knowing. same. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's rad. Yeah, silent voice uh, is incredible. I love a silent voice. Mm-hmm. God in heaven, I love movies so much. Love that Psychic right. Heist is a child I, I, freaking I, out at all these movies you've not seen. I know. It's very funny. Yeah, right. I looked and unfortunately the Revue Starlight movie is two hours, 22 seconds long. So it did. Uh, ah, I just it, can't make just it. Just darn. Oh, silent voice darn. is two hours, 10 minutes. So. Sorry. Um, Liz and the Bluebird is like 90 minutes. Mm. Yeah, that one's pretty short. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Movies are movies are so good. Media, there's so much good media that's not fucking RPGs. I finished the Shira <laughs> watching the first Shira season and loved it. I'll get Everybody I'll get, we can, fucking loves yeah, that. We can circle back around once we watch more of that. Um, but I I I want to watch some more anime. Um, but I I don't know. I feel like I'm probably gonna finish um, Final Fantasy Nine and then try to do more of this stuff that is, you know, like good movies and TV shows and books and visual novels. It's very nice. Yeah. That okay. is the problem though when like long RPG is not equivalent to like watching 50 movies. No, it's not cuz every every starting a movie is there's like a psychic cost yeah. to to jumping into a completely new artistic mm-hmm. vision and yeah. world and cast and rules. Yeah. And it, it, it's harder it is harder than just playing one one game for 50 hours like you said but i think if that one game doesn't pan out then you think mm-hmm. oh i could have done so much more with that time yeah, yeah. so like they they have their own pros and cons yeah, for think, sure. of, yeah. think of like the seven movies i could have watched and not played will a wonderful world yeah, yeah something like that there's a, i i don't i don't feel like I don't want to feel like no, guilt I, for playing. Yeah, you know, like, I don't like looking at it like that. RPGs. I think, yeah, <laughs> I think for me it's when it's like, okay, I've got four hours after work. Do I watch a movie or do I play RPG? And then mm-hmm. play RPG is like also for the next three weeks every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I mean that's been me. I got yeah. that. I absolutely get that. No, you um, have to. It's it's having to choose really. Yeah. Um. I, I wanna I wanna play mediocre RPGs. If I don't play mediocre <laughs> RPGs, I'm not gonna find the ones that I love. Um, that's that's the cost you. That is the that is yeah. the payment you make. Is and, and also like you pull good stuff, cool stuff out of mediocre RPGs. You grow as a mm-hmm. player, as a as a as a person. Sure. I, I considered a world in which I never play Sweet Code in three from the, my whole life, <laughs> and it made me very sad. Y'all. What's I'm imagining that gift from The Simpsons where, you know, Lionel Hutt's imagining the perfect world without <laughs> lawyers. I was imagining the guy stepping onto the rake over yeah, and over. Yeah. <laughs> or that one. Yeah. Oh that my too. god. That too. That guy watched all of Sword Art Online, and I've got something out of that. You, you, you can't feel uh, guilty uh, for engaging with bad media. I think. You know what's um, funny? So I was I was looking at Netflix last night, mm-hmm. and Sword Art Online was on there, and I hovered over it to see the little preview video, okay. and it was the scene at the start of two with Sinon jumping off the church and like doing the cool <laughs> like they know that's the cool shot in the entire season. Yeah, that's the shot. <laughs> that's how we're selling this. They're selling it with the gun Nothing scene. else. Yeah, the show is called Sword Art Online, and then the one clip they show is the teaser is from Gun Gale. <laughs> it, I, it's not that I don't want to engage with RPGs or, or like, you know, bad, <laughs> bad mm-hmm. RPGs or whatnot. Um, it's more like, what's the word? It's more like I'm pretty I feeling understimulated and I need mm-hmm. I, I, I don't need to get home from work and like kind of just push through like three hours of kind of boring RPG. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I need I'm I'm understimulated, I'm bored, I want density of vision and story and movies are really hitting that right yeah. now. Yeah, it's a good way to spend time. It's absolutely yeah. mm-hmm. fantastic. This is, is exactly where I was in August after Yakuza and being like, anime, guys! Like, Fuck some yeah. people some people cope with anime, some people will cope with movies, and some people have spent two weeks watching Olympic curling, and I don't know who that would be. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, the follow-through there would have been, and then some people watch anime movies. I mean, it could have been, but that's not what I've been doing. 
I, I have so many shows that I know are going to be just as dense and amazing, uh, like Devil yeah. May Cry Baby and Izokan. Um, yeah. You know, Yuasa shows. Yeah. Uh, I've got a, I've got a, I've got a bunch of stuff. I, I'm really, like, just just being in general willing to sit down with something that I all I have to, all I can do is just sit and watch it and pay attention to it and having the attention span for that and yeah. retraining my brain to do that yeah. and falling out of practice. Um, I'm very excited. I swear, Twitter has really broken me where it's like. Stare at screen for two hours is like an insurmountable task at times. Oh my god! Just like the just like the relief I feel when I'm doing something social for two hours, and then I go to the bathroom and I'm like, okay, let's catch up on Twitter. <laughs> like it, it does feel like it's fucked up my brain with engage, how I engage, yeah talk to people and how I engage with art. Rhett. What, have you been up to? what else have you been up to? So I was going to say fuck video games. I'm going to talk about anime, but I forgot one video game that I do want to close. Fuck the, yeah. Fuck on. yeah. Let's do it. I finished Half-Life Alex like a day after the last oh, podcast. Hey! Yeah. How'd that go? That ending goes real big. Okay. <laughs> it goes big in like every possible way with like a bunch of big set piece things at the end where it's like the, the hardest they could possibly go with you fighting combine soldiers then oh. you fighting a boss fight and then doing a little Half-Life 2 craziness at the end where you get a new power mm. <laughs> that would only make sense with how that is a VR game. That's cool. <laughs> and it's just fucking bonkers. Nice. And then so there's so there's all this gameplay climax happening for like an hour straight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there is story climax because we knew we knew it's Half-Life. Yeah. They had to, they, yeah, that's all I'm really going to uh, say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, okay, guys, Half-Life 3. That's like, like, what other choice do you have? There's a thing at the end that is like, wink, wink. Uh, okay. Okay. So... <laughs> They may be working on Half Life Three right now, or they may not. Or they may the not be part. because fucking who knows? We could truly. That's so but, funny. But this game definitely <laughs> leaves you wanting more. Great. That's just yeah. what people wanted from Half Life right now. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I know, right? But it's like, okay, I feel like they have taken a step forward mm -hmm. which feels so weird after over a decade since episode two yeah since the great grand story of ha of the half-life oh, 2 saga God. last i know hour. i know <laughs> they do they do in a way progress a sub thread that i think they were thinking about back in episode two and i think that's pretty crazy interesting but also just how, like, VR games always kind of feel like gimmicks to me, where mm -hmm. it's like, you go, oh, that's neat. I'm not going to do, like, five hours of this. So to have this game hook me the entire time, obviously, it's kind of like, you know, the best VR game ever made. It took a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but then to just be so, like, simultaneous invested in the story and the gameplay at the end, where it's like, it's not I'm playing a VR game, it's just I'm inside the video yeah. game you're like, in that world yeah in every conceivable way where it's like when you're really into a good movie or you know anime or something and you just kind of lose sight of the surrounding world it's that feeling but then also you're in vr so you're already having that lose sight of like i was probably physically tired at the end of this because of the action that they're making you do <laughs> yeah but i just i just lost sense of myself i was just <laughs> You became am, one with the yeah, experience. That's, I'm trying to. I am a being of pure energy, killing combine soldiers <laughs> to get to the end. That's so interesting. It, it was a pretty good time, which is why I felt that, like I did want to mention it one more time. Sure. Cool. Um, I watched some anime. Mm -hmm. I watched a show called Shigo Fumi, which is this 2008 yeah kind this of drama. Is wild yeah this was a this was a while back i remember this when i used to browse 4chan right yeah yeah along with other shows like toradora, toradora and, uh, and yeah macross frontier yeah 
But all I ever knew about this show is that it had a pretty striking main character design. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know what it was, and I never got around to watching it. So this show starts really strongly. The premise is uh, that the main character is a mail carrier. She has letters from dead people. Oh, oh shit. So when somebody dies in this universe, they get to write one final letter, and then she comes and delivers it to somebody. Oh. So yeah, you go, oh, this is a I setup mean, like, with a ton of super sad potential. Yeah. 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 And the first few episodes really deliver on that. Oh, nice. And I think the overall vibe of the show really reminded me of Kino's journey, especially so like there's the episodic nature of it. And then there's mm -hmm. the main character who is this really kind of strong, silent type also has has a gun. OK, just uh, another Kino thing. Um, oh, this was all the way back in 2008. Yeah, this was a while back. Mm -hmm. This was like when I did like kind of the the sweep of anime I missed out on. I was this was like the oldest one. Where he's like, oh yeah, I never got around to that. Um, th she also has a talking staff that has a personality very similar to the talking bike in Kino's Journey. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and then she also refers to herself with Boku. Okay. Like it's good and lord. Then and then the art style in general is very, you know, kind of plain and subdued in a way that's also made me think of Kino's yeah, journey. Yeah. And the first few episodes of this are just brutal, mm -hmm. like characters dying and then having one final message sent to their loved ones or like characters that sit around and contemplate suicide and then that turning <sighs> the way in <sighs> an ugly way. Or like characters being bullied and then killing themselves. Like it's a pretty fucking That's dark. dark and heavy show. Yeah. And what bummed me out about it is that around the halfway point, it becomes way more about the mail carrier herself mm -hmm. and her backstory. Oh. And there's just a lot of recurring characters and it stops becoming as episodic. Uh-huh. And I think that story just never panned out in the way that I liked oof like it wasn't what i was here for for that show yeah so it's like half of this was like really good and then half of it was just kind of okay oh it kind of like so, if they it got kind of like if they would have botched like the 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 ongoing story they had going for the second season of jagoku shoujo where they went into yeah. eyes past where like that shit was really cool like if that yeah, like see, it think, seems like that was like kind of what they were going for but they botched it Kind of. It's just like I would have liked because it's only like a 13 episode show devoting half of it to oh, the main yeah, plot. Yeah. Felt a bit mm. like I think if there had been just way more of the episodic stuff and then the main plot thread, like it would have felt more balanced. Yeah. But, but I mean, like Mishishi, takes... Mishishi never it was always episodic. Like it stayed episodic yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Same with Kino's Journey, as far as I know, like yeah. the first season yeah. at least. So, like, you can still have a satisfying show with no grand overall narrative, but this definitely mm -hmm. went for that. And it was a little weird. It was also super pretty dark. It also had, you know, child abuse elements in it. <laughs> the show was definitely super heavy in a time where it was like maybe a few episodes, maybe kind of ugly cry at the end of them, Ooh, <laughs> which, no. is, which is why. But it was like it felt like what I needed through the last month as right. well. Oh, Sometimes you. you just need to ugly cry. Yeah. So, which is why it was such a bummer when it kind of became goofier towards the back half. We're like, there's mm. like a beach episode for some reason. <laughs> like, it's, it's <laughs> such, it takes such swings. Yeah, that makes where it's sense. Where it's like, you have this like really morbid episodic show and then all of a sudden like four characters. Here's the boob episode. Not quite that bad, but like, I don't know. The recurring characters, like two of the regular people were just a normal guy and a normal girl. And they were just like insanely dull. Mm. <laughs> really? Aww. It just didn't kind of all come together in a way. But I still like the show, but it's like, man, parts of it were so good. Like they just couldn't hit that yeah. level of quality for the whole running time. And one final thing, speaking of uh, sequels. I watched Nomad, Megalo Ooh. Box Two. <laughs> oh, okay. Megalo Box Two. So Megalo Box was the boxing anime I yeah. talked about last year oh, that I yeah. didn't that I didn't really like. Yeah. 
because it was like kind of a bad action anime where every fight was just extremely predictable. So the reason I got talked into watching this one is like people who don't like the original like this one. Mm, okay. And it's a very different take on that story where it's this one's not like the first season was a boxing anime. It's an action show and he boxes. Mm-hmm. This one's a drama that happens to have some boxing in it. Huh. Okay. Because basically it's five years later and everything went to shit. Oh. The main character, Joe, is like addicted to painkillers. Oh, no. He's moved away. He's like left his town. He left all his friends and family behind. And he's just he's the nomad now. He's just drifting and he's in a bad fucking spot. Mm-hmm. So it's just a story of him kind of regaining his soul, really. And like trying to repair what was broken. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's a very sad kind of rough show. But again, (laughs) kind of felt in a way what I needed to watch right now. Yeah, cool. Sometimes you need that. Yeah. It's like it's just it's a hard show because like the relationships from the first season start so broken at the start of this one because they have the five year time skip yeah and it's just like oh yeah there was no heavily a- happily ever after here and, and you know and just like trying to move on when you've done some shitty stuff and have to repair those relationships yep mm-hmm. to have you know you have to have hope to move forward mm-hmm. so yeah that was a good show um that's I haven't been watching as much anime, obviously, because I'm playing a lot of video games as well. So I'm trying to maintain that balance. It's a good balance really to have. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's right. It's very funny. It's literally just like mm-hmm. you, you you do one thing until it's boring, and then you can do another thing, and it stops being. And then it's good that there's a lot of different yeah. kinds of art out there. I know you you start listening to movies you ha- you haven't seen, and I'm just like, well, I've seen even less. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Movie Watching Club is going to be starting the week after (laughs) We Like Bad Music Only. Perfect. (laughs) Episode one, American Psycho. All right, let's go. I'd riff over that. Hell yeah. It was funny because in December, December was like when I really hit the, okay, I'm out of anime. I really want to watch. And then I watched Railgun and then I watched Accelerator. And then, oh, the Ravy Starlight movie dropped out of nowhere. Oh my god, that hit me like a ton of breaks. I have to rewatch the series now, and then rewatch the movie. And then it's January, and I'm like, okay, now I'm back to video games. <laughs> Read every, I think every volume of of Monogatari has basically been adapted. That, that's so fucking. There's wild. so much of that. I dropped after season one, and they kept going for like a decade. <laughs> Because I read the first book and I was just like, oh, that was a fun time. And then I realized, like, they actually did adapt, like, all of those books. <laughs> I mean, it was like a mega hit for them. Like 30 books. It's and a lot. Just, <laughs> it's like 100 episodes of anime over the last decade. All right. Sorry. I can, I, no, I'm just saying I completely lost track of that one because I watched, like, the first 12 episodes or whatever and dipped. Mm. And then... They kept making more for a very long time. Yeah, just thinking like, well, if I like the book, maybe I can just that. That would be pretty quick. Now that I'm actually kind of interested in watching sequential media again. All right, mm. that's it. That's all. I, that's that's that was my okay. introduction. Didn't mean to interrupt. Well, I was I was done. So, uh, all right, all right. So, I think that's a podcast. I guess that's another one in the can from your favorite Valentine's podcast. Uh, we're your valentines remember that we're your valentines um thanks everybody again for tuning in as always we appreciate it a lot also remember that yes the uh, coming up in about a week or so we have a new podcast launching called we like bad music only and it's a podcast where we will be talking about music that we enjoyed over the previous month uh, and all that fun stuff we'll be just doing that once a month so that'll be a fun cool. new thing that again nobody will listen to but that's okay we do it. For, we're, it. We're doing it for us. So if other people coming along, and that's you know. basically how I feel about this podcast, anyways. Like I don't know if anybody listens. Yeah, I like, like who actually it. listens to the, Like I don't know. Like I know that people download it because my numbers say they do. But I'm just like, what? Huh? <laughs> it's just three people bullshitting. I mean, I know Callie listens. I mean, she basically made it real <laughs> obvious. Oh. Um. But uh. Yeah. 
So, we love y'all. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, we, we love fun. y'all. Thanks for coming out. Uh, while we get ourselves out of here, uh, John Thayer, tell the internet folks at home where they can find you. You can find me at farawaytimes.itch.io. You can play um, Nymph's Tower, which I released, um, which Toby and, I, Toby and I released, and along with several other people um, a couple months ago. It's a 2D Metroidvania platformer. It's pretty cool and fun. Um, then you get the also, second half of it, and then it's like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rhett. Uh, Rhett. Oh, I think I dropped that. The, uh, watch your every starlight. And then watch the movie. Man, it's I still don't, I still don't, don't, get, I still don't get the Review Starlight love. I just I, don't. It's the most the weird. Movie, the movie is so good. I know, but it's just the weirdest segment of just like, I don't like the series. I like the half of the movie. It's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> it's still so the, It is still the it's most the befuddling greatest thing segment. ever. It is the most befuddling segment we have ever had on this podcast. <laughs> and I, I'm still, months later... I'm still not okay because I don't understand. <laughs> the second time I watched the movie, I like cried so hard that I like was shaking for like an hour afterwards. <laughs> God. Well, Polly, I believed in Faye and Ellie being in love so much. It made me forgive like most of Zeno Gears. <laughs> <laughs> Telling me you forgot about Rico? Memorable Rico? <laughs> Anyway, you can find me at twitch.tv slash polyhead where I do various VTube things and I stream our podcast there too. That's probably important to mention. Uh, so anyway, again, happy Valentine's everybody. We're your Valentine's. We love you because remember, we are the podcast that loves you. We are the only ones that love you. We're your only Valentine. We are your only Valentine. <laughs> there you go. Got it. In. Told you I wouldn't. I would remember. All right, I'm gonna toss the raid on over to my friends at Retro Games Live. They are running an event called RGL Love, uh, in which they're playing a bunch of games that they love, and uh, they're raising money so that they can keep putting on events over the course of the year. Yeah, keep equipment, like p keep people with you know parts of their computers that may be gone or something like that. They're helping people. Get that stuff replaced so they can continue putting on a lot of great retro content. So stick around, check out their event. A lot of good friends over there, a lot of good people. Super open and accepting community. You'll find love there. You'll find lots of cool shit. So we'll catch you next time, folks. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I'll catch you later this week with a couple of streams. Uh, so anyway, bye-bye.